The following is a presentation of The Day. Everyone loves an underdog. Stonington High School entered the ECC Division II basketball tournament as the number five seed with a difficult path ahead. A dominant performance against St. Bernard was followed by the upset of the number one seed Lyman Memorial and a trip to the Mohegan Sun. Rory Risley has been a dominant presence inside and Emily Obre a scoring constant as coach Paula Solar hopes the Bears defense can lead the way. Who remains? Wyndham, the defending Division II champs. Head coach Robert Mangual has two outstanding guards in Haley Flores and Anaya Jenkins, an experienced roster of talented players, and eyes on another title. The Whippets ran past Griswold and Plainfield and hope to make history repeat itself. Will the Bears pull off the upset, or can the Whippets go back to back? We find out. It's the ECC Division II Girls Basketball Championship, and it's live on game day on theday.com. of the Mohegan Sun. It's time for Girls Championship Basketball. The Stonington High School Bears and the Wyndham Whippets will tip it off in the Division II Final of the 2023 ECC Girls Basketball Championship and we have all the action live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile and at Waterford Dental Health your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized dental care that you deserve. Contact us today. Visit us at waterfordentalhealth.com for more information. Casey O'Neill along with the coach, Chris Giusti, and it's always a special night here, Championship Tuesday. Back-to-back -back Tuesdays, the girls tonight, the boys next week. And we've got an interesting game to start us off with. It's the rubber match, right? These two teams have played twice this year. Uh, very different results. Uh, Wyndham comes back as the defending Division II champions in Stonington, hoping to pull a little bit of the magic tonight and upset, I think, even though if it, you know you might argue, and I'm interested to see if you do, that it's not that big an upset. I think Wyndham, as defending champs, sort of in the driver's seat. Yeah, well, like you said, it's the tiebreaker match between both teams, and both teams are, are starting to play their best basketball at the right time of the year. You know, they both have strung together a bunch of wins, haven't lost that much in the last five to seven games. So uh, we're seeing both teams playing at their best, and really contrasting styles, Casey, that we're going to see in this first game tonight. Uh, Wyndham is very guard-oriented, guard-heavy, not very deep on the bench. So they kind of play zone out of necessity to keep themselves out of foul trouble. But really, their strength is their speed, their quickness, their ball handling. Stonington, on the other hand, they have some more post presence. They have some more, uh, more of a size advantage, and, and they really want to get the ball inside. Wyndham has some shooters. It'll be interesting to see you know, how that translates on a court such as this with the, the backdrop being further away, but they really do get a lot of their points from the perimeter or by driving the ball in, whereas Stonington, more traditional, wants to pound the ball down low and, and get the ball inside. So contrasting styles, we'll see which team plays to their strength better. Well, when we talk contrasting styles, we have to talk about the versatile George Hathaway. George, what do you got for us? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Here we are at the Mohegan Sun Arena where stars are born. And today we have a great matchup between Stonington and Wyndham. And the Bears, they sure had a fun run here to the Sun, taking down the number one team by 10 points. They want to continue that today against the number two top dog, Wyndham Whippets, who are looking to go back to back ECC Division II champions here today. It's going to be a great matchup between some two teams that are, are very fun to watch. Casey? Thank you, George. And, you know, it, it's interesting. We talked about it being the rubber match, right? So within three days of each other, they played. Wyndham put a hurting on them the first time. Stonington comes back at home and beats them. And then at that moment, both teams get catch fire and go down the stretch 6-1, and 7-1, and one, clearly playing their best basketball. So you know, while it's an upset because uh, Stonington's the five seed and, you know, they're playing the defending champs and, and I think Wyndham did put a hurting on them at one time, it's going to be interesting to see how much Stonington has learned and the confidence 
they've gotten from that win in the subsequent stretch run. And that's where coaching makes a difference, Casey. You know, they have a coach over there on that Stonington sideline that is no stranger to making adjustments, to seeing what other teams can do. And, and a, a new coach for Wyndham this year is doing a great job with these girls. Well, we're getting ready to start, and that means the dulcet tones of Bill Glennie. Let's send it to our PA announcer for all of your pregame announcements. Mohegan Sun Arena for the 2023 ECC Division II Girls Basketball Championship. Game number one tonight features the number five seeded Bears of Stonington and the number two ranked Wyndham Whippets. Before we meet tonight's starting lineup, I'd like to address your attention to the big board as we meet tonight's players, brought to you by Game Day and The Day. Mackenzie Pettigrew, Dean's Mill School. Elizabeth Jones, Ledger Center School. Alita Perry, Dean's Mill. Presley Smith, St. Michael School. Emily Obrey, West Vine. Adeline Risley, Sale School Elementary. Dia Patel, Dean's Mill School. Rory Risley, Sale School Elementary. Caitlin Cadmus, St. Michael's School. Bethany Shaneker, Dean's Mill. Haley Flores, Natchog Elementary. Anaya Jenkins, Black Widow Elementary School. Alana Robbins, Charles H. Burris Center Academy. Jilly Saber, North Windham Elementary School. Kylie Figueroa, Sweeney School. Jay Sabel Vasquez, Espino, Añasco, Puerto Rico. Alyssa Lubzak, St. Mary's St. Joseph School. Alia Cotto, Sweeney Elementary School. Alia Boyd, Windham Center Elementary School. Jay Serta. Sweeney Elementary. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our finalists. First, we begin with the five seed in Stonington High School. Upset wins over St. Bernard's and Lima Memorial earned their trip to Mohegan. Currently 11 and 11 on the year, they are led by head coach, Ms. Paula Salar. Okay, Bears fans, make some noise. Let's meet their starting five. <laughs> starting at guard, a five foot five senior, number two, Mackenzie Pettigro. <laughs> starting at forward, a five seven sophomore, number 12, Emily Obrey. <laughs> starting at guard, a five foot five senior, number 20, Dia Patel. Starting at center, a six-foot sophomore, number 22, Rory Risley. And starting at guard, a 5'6 sophomore, number 32, Caitlin Cadmus. This brings us to the number two seed in Wyndham. Currently 14 and 8 on the year. They punched their ticket to the sun with wins over Griswold and Plainfield. Coached by Mr. Rob Mangual. Put your hands together, Whippet fans. Here's your starting five. Starting at guard, a five foot four junior, number two, Haley Flores. Starting at guard, a five foot five sophomore, number three, Anaya Jenkins. Starting at guard, a five foot four sophomore, number five, J. Liz Rivera. Starting at forward, a five foot eight junior, number 20, Alyssa Lebizak. And starting at forward, a 5'9", senior, number 23, Aaliyah Boy. Your officials tonight, Miss Kathy Allen, Mr. Chad Cooney, and Mr. Rob Studley. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem.
Tonight's anthem is being performed by the Ledger High School Chamber Choir under the direction of Miss Melanie Cometa. And now it's time for some fresh squeezed juice. Keys to the game brought to you by the Holy Club, the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut, located at 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Juice, what's going to happen tonight? What are the keys to tonight's game? Well, Casey, for Stonington, middle magic. Be patient against the zone. Don't settle for threes. Get the ball to the middle and attack inside. Bear on the boards, get second chances with offensive rebounds and limit Wyndham to one shot. And make them dribble, can't let Wyndham get open threes. Close out on shooters and make them dribble the basketball. For Wyndham, quick as a whipping. Push the ball up court and don't let Stonington settle into their half court defense. Bull market, can't let Stonington out muscle you for loose balls. And don't break the shell, keep your 3-2 zone tight and don't allow gaps. Stonington wins the tip, Patel has it, and the first possession of the game is with the Bears. Wyndham settling into, looks like man-to-man -man defense to start, which I think is a smart move. As Coach Curlin always told me, Casey, he who has the chalk last wins. And in the last game, Stonington got the better of Wyndham. Wyndham played a lot of 3-2 zone. So Coach Manguel going man-to-man, -man, gonna try to use it, the athleticism and speed that they have. The quick whippets, the very deliberate Bears. A little running hook, no good from Pettigro. Rebound and out, pushing it is Rivera. And Wyndham's gonna want to try to use that quickness with those multiple guards. And you see Stonington, they're gonna want, like you said, Juice, they're gonna want to keep them on the perimeter and away from the basket. Yeah, and traditionally, Paula Solar, her career will play a lot of 3-2 zone. Um, and they'll match up out of this zone too. A, a little bit more of a, of a man type zone. They'll come out and extend on players and they're gonna need to because Wyndham has some shooters. There's a steal from Pettigro. She's up ahead of the pack. Layup no good and the rebound from Jenkins coming the other way now, yeah, the Whippets. Flores running the floor and the first basket belongs to Haley Flores and the Whippets. And she's probably the best player on the floor tonight. They're gonna have to get her out in transition, give her opportunities to get to the bucket. Risley picked up her dribble. Sets a good screen for Pettigro, step back. Bank shot, no good. Good box out from Wyndham, but it gets tipped to Obrey. Now Patel will kick it up top. One of Stonington's strength is rebounding. Shot goes up, that was tipped. And out of the pack with it comes Rivera. Eyes up, long pass to Jenkins, dumped down inside, tipped off the Levisac, and it'll stay with the Whippets. Good tempo so far for the Whippets. This is, I think, the style that gives them more of an advantage. Can they sustain it? Longer court, 10 feet longer. Let's see if they can continue to play this way. Drive, a little bit out of control, and nice rebound comes down to Cadmus. Obrey picks the dribble up and finds Patel. Nice dump down. Cadmus kicks back out. 
Stonington a little tight here in the early going with the shots. We often see that here at the Sun in the early going. Three straight away, good! Anaya Jenkins knocks down the triple. Right on cue, the Whippets are doing exactly what they need to do, and Stonington settling for jump shots early. Pettigrew gets, Pettigrew gets fouled, she'll go to the line, and she'll shoot two, but Whippets, I love what, I, what they, they do. They, they force the tempo, they push, and they take good shots, so they don't get out of control. Once they've pushed, they really spread the floor well. And on the other side, you know, like we said with the, the depth, you know, sometimes the early shots are often a little bit problematic. And we saw that here in the early going. So here's a good chance, right? Get to the free throw line. Yeah. Pettigrew knocks down a shot. Always good. Rather than shooting from outside in this cavernous arena, get inside, get a couple easy baskets if you can. Yeah, and that was good defense by Wyndham. Kind of bail out and going for a shot block there. Didn't have to. And Stonington's able to convert one of two. Flying out of the pack ahead, there's Flores. Nice bounce pass. I think she probably could have taken it herself. And instead, turnover, ball goes back over to the Bears. Yeah, a little bit too unselfish there, but the right idea, and I think Coach Manguel will be okay with that. It was the right idea. They're executing the game plan early. Windham now in a zone. That's a partially blocked shot from Patel. Got a piece of it was Jenkins. So that last possession, Casey, they went back to the 3-2 zone, switching up the defenses, which I think is still one of the most effective ways to fool high school teams. That's a nice little dump down and kickback. Shot was missed. And we're gonna get an offensive foul. Good job stepping in. Taking the charge was Jenkins. Three-person officiating crew tonight, Rob Stubley, Todd Morgan, and Kathy Allen. Allen on the call that time with the charge. And I know part of Stonington's identity is, is also to get out and run, but I really think on a game like tonight, they want to be a little bit more deliberate and, and just make sure they're getting the ball inside. Inside touch every possession. See the length advantage here, Casey, that Stonington has when they when these girls put their arms up. You want to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, they're long and they can definitely create problems. Getting the basket was Flores. Good rebound. Jenkins and Pettigro comes out of the pack. Good no call that time. Standing the ground was Lebizak. Up ahead now, running the floor is Jenkins. And she's gonna get the basket waved off, but a foul on the floor. I think Pettigro tried to foul her on the floor, knowing she was out of position, but probably maybe didn't have to. You see, good outlet pass there, and Pettigro just says, I'm gonna foul early. I don't know that she needed to do that. And we're gonna get a timeout from Stonington. They're gonna talk things over. It's a 30 second timeout, so we're gonna stay here. Of course, we should remind everybody that at eight o'clock, the nightcap of the Doubleheader, the Division I tournament final between the defending champion New London High School Whalers, the number one seed, and the number three seed and very exciting Ledger Colonels in what has become, uh, from my perspective, one of the best rivalries in the ECC, the Ledger New London rivalry across sports, but particularly on both sides in basketball as well as football, soccer has become a really fun rivalry. Um, and. This Ledger girls team is exciting. They love to go, go, go. Of course, you're going to get this, a chance to see some dynamic players with Kervin, Lancaster, Dudley. So that's our 8 o'clock game tonight in the Division I final. And here Stonington's going to go 2-3 zone out of bounds on the OB defense. Good hands from Pettigro. Three-pointer from the corner is no good, but great offensive rebound. From Levizak, tied up, possession arrow favors Wyndham. So that's a, a hustle transit, you know, turnover in the possession. Yeah, it's been a bull market so far. I told the uh, viewers, the keys of the game, be tougher inside. Great inbounds play, Jenkins to Levizak for an easy basket. And that's why I never like 2-3 zone out of bounds defense. You could just screen that middle and get something open.
Here's a dump down to Risley. She hasn't had a possession in a while. Tries to spin, kicks out. And there's the bread and butter right there. We mentioned them in the open. Inside with Risley, Obrey, absolutely potent shooter, especially on that little 15-foot area. And that's what Stonington did effectively down the stretch. Risley and Obrey. Yeah, inside out, squared up, shooter squared up to the basket, not on the move. Such an easier jump shot to hit. And if you look at how these two teams played their best basketball down the stretch, in the early going, Wyndham has, been a, has done a better job of doing what they did well than Stonington has. Stonington has to use the inside. Patel, pump fakes, and we'll go back and she walked. Stonington, from, from the moment they lost that game to Wyndham, made a commitment to getting the ball inside and going inside out. Yes, they like to run, but they really tried to get the ball into the interior to their bigs. On the other side, Wyndham really hit its stride when it started to really turn up its tempo and get transition points off of their defense. Here in the early going, Wyndham's done a better job of being what they want to be than Stonington has of being what they want to be. Yeah, couldn't say it any better myself, Casey. Long three, no good, long rebound. Comes down to Flores. She loses it on the floor and ripped away from Risley. And now she goes up ahead to Obrey. Obrey finishes strong at the basket. She's left-handed. She found that spot that she likes. And Stonington's got it back to within a basket. Yeah, in the last couple possessions, Wyndham's been a little sloppy with the basketball. And they can't settle for threes. They, they have to execute, try to get into those gaps. Wild runner, and there's strong rebound from Risley. And, you know, Rory Risley only the so is only a sophomore. This is actually a pretty young Bears team. Pettigrew's a senior and Patel's a senior. But most of their minutes are coming from sophomores like Cadmus and Risley and Obrey, strong sophomore class. Risley, as she develops over the next couple of years, is going to be a really formidable player because you don't often see the dirty work players. She loves being in the paint. Yeah, she's been impressive. And I think they just gotta keep finding ways to get her touches inside, operate through her first before you take a jump shot. Lee DePerry's checked into the game for Stonington as they turn it over. DePerry, who's a freshman, right? So they get younger when they substitute it out. A very young team. Wyndham as well, by the way. A Boyd is a senior, and there's no other seniors playing right now for Wyndham. So, you know, looking ahead, both of these teams, again, returning all the players. It's a very young league right now. And, and Wyndham has some good middle school players up and coming on the horizon. So this Wyndham program is going to be good for years to come. More freshmen and sophomores playing meaningful minutes at the varsity level than we've ever seen before across all sports and definitely on ba in basketball. Drive, little shot wild from Rivera and rebound Risley. Here comes Pettigro running the floor now, pushing it and they'll settle into their offense. Wyndham. That's a nice dump. Wyndham. Sorry Casey, Wyndham back in the zone. Oh, that's a good drive to the basket. Can't finish it, but I like to Perry, the freshman, going down on the baseline and getting to the basket. So interesting, though, that Wyndham abandoned the man-to-man. -man. I, I, I'd be curious uh, to know why Coach Manguel didn't like what he saw. It look, looked good from our vantage point, but they went back to the 3-2 zone, which uh, they played a lot against Ledyard in that big upset win in, late in the regular season when Wyndham beat Ledyard. Um, and that is kind of a defense they like to play to stay out of foul trouble. Three, no good. Another rebound, long rebound. This time, Obrey has it. Basket's gotten a little small for Wyndham. Pettigrew drives, no good. That's good defense and a strong rebound. Pettigrew got her own rebound. Dumps down. And the tying basket made in the paint by Cadmus. Good recognition by Pettigrew there, driving, hitting the post in the middle. And there's a block from Risley on Flores. And we're at the end of a quarter, and we're all tied up at seven. Come on back for second quarter action. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. The Holy Club. 
the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut. Featuring Foresight Sports Simulator technology, you can test your game on the greatest courses in the world. Want to improve your swing? Schedule a lesson with their on-site PGA Pro. Want to host an event? The lounge offers the perfect setting to watch all the big games. Gift cards are available and make the perfect stocking stuffer for this holiday season. Don't wait. Stop by the Holy Club, 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. Well, we start the second period in the same position we started the game, a tie score. And I mean, we started off by saying Wyndham was doing a better job of being who they want to be. Stonington really unfazed, showed some poise, and got back to their identity. Yeah, good use of the timeout by Coach Solar in that first quarter and uh, got her team settled down. They got some inside touches, and that started them on their way to getting some points. Obrey dumps down to Risley. Risley puts it on the floor. Nice dump down again. Risley gets with a strong hand. Good defense, though, but Risley follows up her own shot. Basket good and the foul. Credit Risley with just the hustle and toughness. Stonington with the lead. Yeah, so Wyndham's going to have to make a decision on how they want to defend Risley in the post. If they're going to play from behind, with the defender behind, they gotta send a double team immediately. If not, if they're not gonna double her, they're gonna have to try and front the post to deny those post entries. Rivera. Well, I think I, what, they, what we saw early was they cut off her, her that strong side spin, right? They wouldn't let her drop step to the, her right, and that's where she wants to go. So they cut that one off right away. The last couple of possessions, Stonington's done a nice job swinging the basketball and getting it to her so that she can go that way before the double can come. So uh, you're right, they gotta make a conscious decision to send that double earlier. There's a block by Risley. And Stonington tight, tightening up their 3-2 zone defense. As I said earlier, they'll, they'll extend out of that zone, but they do a good job of passing cutters so that nobody gets open going through the middle. And Risley is just a big presence when her arms are straight up in the air. She's like 6'6". Bank is open for Rivera, knocking it down and getting us back to an even game at nine. Wyndham extending the 3-2 pressure now. There's a dump down, Risley, and we're gonna get a foul on the floor. Rivera was there and gets called for the body. Yeah, she was in her vertical space. It looked like uh, Rivera got the worst of it, but unfortunately, she was in Risley's vertical space. So, fouls on Jayla's Rivera, inbound. Kick back out. Open three is up and no good. Rebound tipped. Flores, she's a jet with the basketball, and she's gonna get fouled on the floor. She had Cadmus on her hip and did a nice job of drawing the contact. Once again, Stonington's gonna play 2-3 out of bounds defense. Click, double dribble did Flores. Back to Flores. Drive to the left and Stonington doing a much better job defending. You see Risley again bothering the shot of Levzak. Dangerous pass by Pettigrew, too tall for Obrey. I was just about to say, I really like how Mackenzie Pettigrew is a, the old quintessential point guard, right? Really just a facilitator trying to get her team into the right spots. I do like her vision. Yeah, I mean, she's gonna have to do a good job of taking care of the basketball out there on the perimeter all game long. Good ball movement, open three is short. 
And oh, there's a lid on the basket right now for the Whippets. That was good. The last two possessions, though, for Wyndham, they've actually had really good movement. They've been patient, gotten good shots. You can live with that as a coach. Good hands by Jayla's Rivera. Up ahead it goes to Jenkins. Rivera drives, floater. Oh, pretty move. The difference there, you land on two, get your base below you before you shoot. Not, not running towards the basket. Just a beautiful execution there. Pettigro, a little wild shot, no good, good box out, and a turnover will go to the Whippet. So that's the shot that has not, really Stonington's trying to avoid. That inside out has been really good for them. Conversely, you're right, Wyndham's starting to really, much better ball movement, moving the ball around, and we're gonna get a substitution in the game. Cotto will come into the game for Wyndham. Nice kick, three ball in and out from Flores. And I'm telling you, there is a lid on the basket for Wyndham right now. Yeah, Wyndham has executed last, that's the last four possessions now. Good execution from Wyndham. Extending that pressure now, full court, one, two, two. Good hands, Jenkins, but she turns it right back over again. Donington just has to settle it, settle it. Move the ball around, swing the ball, ball fakes. Obrey, that's her spot on the baseline, buries it. Emily Obrey. Timeout, Wyndham. Man Coach Mangual wants to talk it over. And with that timeout, we'll take a timeout. Brought to you by the Burns Agency. It, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. 11-11, aces are wild here at the Sun as Stonington and Wyndham are deadlocked here in the middle of the second period. And I think, you know, early it was Wyndham and Stonington put on a little run and now I think we've settled into a pretty even contest. But you're seeing some room on for both teams offensively to make improvements. Yeah, execution is gonna be the key as this game continues to play out. Not forcing shots, catching passes, well-delivered passes, like the simple things that you learn in you know, elementary school basketball, all that fundamental stuff is gonna come into play in this game. Oh, good ball fake there. Wide open under the basket was Risley. They didn't see her, excuse me, Obrey. Instead, Risley spins to the basket, and Rory Risley, if you get her that low to the basket, she's impossible. Yeah, the, the, the Wyndham's gonna have to come up with some kind of game plan to negate that because that's too much height and too much skill if she gets the ball that close to the basket. Oh, good drive to the basket. And this time, Levizak took it all the way and went on a better angle so Risley couldn't get there. That was a good move. Levisak is gonna be a pivotal player in this game because she's the person in charge of setting the ball screens and rolling to the basket. So she's gonna ha end up getting the ball in her hands a lot. Dump down, Risley. And you know what? That was good defense and a double. And she just turned and shot it over the top of him. Yeah, you can't let her get it. That's where the adjustment has to come into play. You gotta meet her higher. As she's running down the court, you gotta meet her higher so that she can't just plant herself down in the low block. 
And the second thing is, you gotta get some kind of front defense on her so she doesn't able to score. Cotto knocks down the baseline jumper on a nice look from Flores. So again, both teams getting better looks here on the offensive side. Exactly what you said, both teams should. They both kind of figured out how to get the looks. It's just about execution. There's a beautiful roll to the basket by Cadmus, and she missed the layup. And that was, again, I mean, you can't ask for a better look. Yeah, beautiful execution against the 3-2 the zone. I know there's a lot of 3-2 zone being played out there today on both sides, boys and girls, but that execution there where you send that high post cutter, quick ball reversal, send that high post cutter down to the block, you're gonna get something a lot of the time. I'd like to see Wyndham go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Ball tipped out of the pack. With the rebound is Obrey. Here comes Pettigrew. Good look to Cadmus. There's Cadmus again, kick out. Baseline to the freshman, spin. No good and it tipped out of bounds. It'll go over to Wyndham. DePerry had a look on the baseline. Oh, they're gonna overrule it? Okay. It's gonna be Stonington ball, they changed his mind. Todd Morgan said, uh, nope. I said safe, I meant out. Wyndham also playing 2-3 out of bounds defense here. Wyndham will kind of play a 3-2 that morphs into a 2-3. They drop Jenkins down on the into the corner from the top. There's a nice look, Obrey, that's her shot, money. Emily Obrey is money on the baseline. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Wyndham's got to think about this zone because Stonington's starting to figure it out. They're executing, they're moving the ball. And when you play zone, you don't have an assigned person on Risley uh, in the paint. So that's also a problem. Good drive by Flores, but she couldn't get it to finish. And good hands from Jenkins. Obrey was headed to the basket. Instead, it'll be a it'll be here with Stonington. Neither team has been able to stretch it out to four since we got tied up again. Stonington keeps hovering with his two-point lead. Good ball movement here on the perimeter. May seem simple, but this gets the zone to work. You gotta make the zone work. Kids can only play defense for so long. The Perry gets fouled as she heads to the basket. Here's a difference between I don't want to make it about girls versus boys, but this is a difference between how Stonington is approaching this. I've seen a lot of three twos, a lot of three point shots that other teams would have taken, especially from Pettigrew, but they are committed to getting it inside and working it around the perimeter to get that look right there. Cadmus can't get it to finish, but that's a much better look. There's been a bunch of per perimeter threes that they have not taken. Yeah, and that's how you take the soul away from the zone, when you get it into the middle. Baseline, Cotto drives, can't go. Again, Risley got a piece of it. And tipped out of bounds as the buzzer sounds. Stonington with a two-point lead heading into the half. Not the way we thought it was going to go early, but they've made a nice adjustment. And we're gonna have a quick conversation with Stonington coach Paula Solar with our own George Hathaway. Find out what Coach Solar is thinking about her team's progress here at halftime. Two point lead for the Bears as Coach Solar is with our own George Hathaway. George. Thank you guys, here I am with Coach. And you know, it was a slow start for you guys in that first quarter, you called the timeout. What did you tell the girls to kind of get those first quarter jitters out? Um, well, actually I said there was a reason why we got here. And I also said, we need to stay to our plan. I think when kids get nervous, they start to um, come out of their plan a little bit. And that's what we have to get back to doing. Um, what we prepared for in practice, not once we start doing our own thing, it's usually not so good. So um, 
that's pretty much all I told them. And uh, I think we're doing better, though. I think we're starting to do the things that we were talked about. You guys have a two-point lead here at halftime. What is the message to your girls in the locker room to continue the momentum? Um, I think we should continue Ladies with our higher percentage shots, stick to the plan, and we really do have to watch that they're not, um, you know, they're, they're one of the, an outstanding three-point shooting team, so we've got to be able to uh, keep those down. That's what, that's their bread and butter, so. Um, we, we have to be on them all the time. Thank you so much, Coach. Best of luck. Thank you, George. Thank you, Coach. We're at halftime. It's a two-point lead for the Stonington Bears. We've got some highlights and other things on the other side. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. It's family on the court and off the court. We're always going at it. We've been playing since we were kids. Since we were little kids, we've always been playing each other, playing with each other. Uh, I think this was in third grade. <laughs> We all were playing together and uh, just working our hardest. I'm pretty sure we won the rec league that year. It's crazy because we talk about Griswold all the time being triplets, and then I get two of my, my family members on the same team with me, and it's just crazy. Oh, practices are rough, and especially after practice, we go at it. And it's our parents tell us all the time, off the court, is is off the court. You can't argue, and what stays on the court is on the court. But I always yell at these two. Well, my brother Tyler, he hustles. He's a workhorse. He's everywhere. He does things that don't show up in the stat line. He's a hustler. He always hustles. He always works hard no matter what. And then my cousin, he rebounds. He's a presence in the paint. I think we get 15 plus rebounds just by him being in the game. Like he's a big man, but although everyone sees him as big, like he's doing skill player moves to get to the basket. He's doing everything that the team needs to succeed. While Travis, on the other hand, he can facilitate. He can pass to me down low or Lexi down low while we're flashing, or he can knock down the three pointer, which is a big part of the team that we need. Who's the most competitive of the three? I'm going to have to say me. I like to say me. I don't like losing. Travis says Travis, Lexi says Lexi, but they both know it's me, so. Uh, it doesn't matter. I could beat them in any sport. Soccer, lacrosse, uh, you name it. That's, I'll just compete and work my hardest to out anything them. After the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. And check out all the great entertainment coming this winter at Foxwoods. Go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's the Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. to bring those voices. That was a really fun transition. Again, this flyer is new to flying. I mean, that was full team participation in that tumbling pass, which I don't think we've seen from any other squad today.
single base stunt. Showcasing flexibility with different skills. Another stunt here. I mean, what a difficult feat with only three people on the map putting this many stunts up. And keeping it interesting. Uh, the crowd appreciates it as well. Oh, yeah. Had some of my favorite songs in it. I'm going to assume it was Let It Go from Frozen. <laughs> if it wasn't, that's mine. So, great job. And right there, that says it all. Very proud coaches and very proud athletes right there. They really took that routine and did everything to the best of their ability. I was very entertained by that. Definitely a difficult feat with three people. And the only thing with Coach Jennings could bring her entire roster over to the uh, interview table, and I think she should, and she is. We will have Stonington High School coach and all of the cheerleaders are over there with her. And we'll get two of them right now with George. George, take it away. Here I am with Jess and Abby. I mean, girls, just being a very small team, but this is like one of your first times being on the mat in this kind of capacity. Take me through your emotions and feelings right now. Uh, it's very nerve-wracking, but also very exciting. Like, feeling and hearing the crowd, it just gives you a lot of energy. Um, as a senior and this being my first and only time being able to be on the high school competition mat, it feels really great. <laughs> a lot of great emotions here. And Take me throughout the week. What were you guys feeling and kind of preparing yourselves for this moment? Um, it was a lot of pressure, but we knew we had it, so it was more good pressure than anything. We also had a basketball game where this was our halftime performance, and we did it on a wooden floor, so I had a pretty good feeling about today. <laughs> well, you guys did great. Congratulations. Great job there. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Two point Stonington lead at halftime and Juice, we saw, you know, Wyndham come out of the gates hot early, running the floor and getting easy baskets. We thought we were going to see them, you know, really exert their influence and then Stonington kind of figured some things out. Yeah, quick as a whip, it was one of the keys of the game and they got out quickly. In transition, they looked really good. Um, but when Stonington was able to settle into their half core offense, and not throw the ball away, not take a wild shot, because a, a wild shot is just like a turnover. And so whenever Stonington was able to get a good solid shot off, they either scored or were able to set up their defense, which forces Wyndham to have to execute, take some longer to get a shot off. And not to mention the fact that Stonington has a, a six foot sophomore center that's dynamite inside. And, and how do you stop a player from setting up inside post position, you have to meet them early. How do you do it without fouling? I think they're gonna have to find a way to dedicate a man, whether you go to man, whether you play like a, a zone concept with one person dedicated to meeting Risley early on. You meet him with your body early on and you make her have to 
fight for position down low instead of just giving her, conceding position to her right from the start. And that's what Aaliyah Boyd was doing in the first few possessions of the game. Boyd, who was a more physical post presence, was pushing Risley away from the basket. Uh, and they got a little bit away from that. And right off the rip here to start the second half, Haley Flores knocks down a three and the Whippets take the lead and show some pressure. Yeah, back, back to man to man, just like they started the game. This is, this is what I think will help Wyndham for some bad shots from the Bears. Patel in and out on the three, rebound and pushing Jenkins for the Whippets. Good recovery by Stonington to get back into D. Stonington also playing man-to-man -man here. You heard Coach Delar say there that Wyndham's such a great three-point shooting team, and right off the bat, they hit a set play with a three to start the second half. Good patience here by Wyndham. I want to give a uh, apology. In the, you know, now I'm allowed to say this because short, bald men everywhere do look alike. I'm one of them. So my apologies to Todd Morgan. He's got game two. It's Chad Cooney out there. And listen, I see a short, bald ref, and I, th and I think Todd Morgan, I should start thinking Chad Cooney as well. So my apologies. I got the, uh, in the world of handsome, dynamic, bald men, of which I recognize them right away. And Risley is going to get hit with a body call, so she's going to draw the foul. You know, the... I think that at the end of the half, we saw both teams settling in offensively to get good shots. So I think it's going to be about which team can change their defense. Patel, three, no good. Obrey, strong rebound, draws the foul. She'll go to the line. So will Wyndham come back into that man? Will Stonington mix up their defense? We saw them play some man. Somebody's going to have to do something different because there was way too many good looks against that zone for both teams at the end of the half. Yeah, and, Sto and Wyndham played man-to-man -man on in that baseline out-of-bounds play just now as well. They just couldn't get the offensive, the defensive rebound. Emily Obrey's a shooter. 10 for Obrey. Up ahead. Nice pass to the cutter. And losing it out-of-bounds was Boyd. I don't think she was ready for the pass from Lebesak. And th I, this is what I've been waiting for, though. Wyndham turning up the pressure. That's what I really thought we would see. A little handoff pass to Patel. Good look down low. Risley spins baseline. Good defense. Hustle rebound. Obrey put back is good. E Emily Obrey has been fabulous scoring the basketball for Stonington. Johnny on the spot again, another offensive rebound. Wyndham's done a good job forcing the first shot to miss, but they're going to have to secure that defensive rebound. Strip from Pettigro. Stonington does not have numbers and a wise decision from the senior point guard. You make Wyndham have to play defense for more than 10 to 15 seconds. Patel with a three, short, comes right into Risley, spins in and out, good defense by Boyd. Boyd bodying Risley, pushing her out just that little extra bit. Weak side, Boyd, follow, no good, tipped, and uh, Cadmus with a strong rebound. Here comes Pettigro, and she will draw the foul on Rivera, and Mackenzie Pettigrew will go to the line to shoot two with a chance to extend the three-point lead. A transition opportunity for Stonington as they're able to beat the defense down the court. Pettigrew in good shape, getting to the rim, draws the foul, gets two free throws. I loved what Coach Salar said at halftime about, you know, every, it's kind of the old right, everyone has a plan until they get hit, but to, when kids get nervous, they tend to improvise and kind of do their own thing. And so settling them down and sticking to your game plan, I could not have described any better what Stonington did. They, they settled down and stuck to their plan. Yeah, and I think at the beginning what, what happened was Wyndham came out and man, and they probably had practiced against zone most of 
the practices preceding this game. And that kind of took them by surprise. And instead of being patient, uh, they settled for jump shots. Now we see some pressure here from Stonington, Casey. Interesting to see if this is just token. Little token man. Yeah, it's just a, and that's the danger right there, right? Wild runner by Lebesak is no good, but she gets her own rebound. I don't like the token pressure. Either either press or don't. Because I don't think it I don't think it suits what Stonington wants to do. Either if you want to try to put a little pressure on, that's fine, but the token man just allows for the quicker Wyndham team to just dribble the ball by him. Yeah, and what we saw there is that Wyndham has ball handlers. Like that Levisak dribbled it all the way up court. She looked like the point guard. Rivera, a little nifty pull up. Short, Pettigrew with the rebound. Long pass to Obrey. And Obrey will draw the blocking foul and go to the line to shoot two. And the difference here in the last couple possessions, Casey, has been Stonington's been able to get shots going to the rim. So they're able to draw fouls. Wyndham settling for fadeaways, step backs, not being able to pick up any kind of contact and one and done. If we, had a, if we had a shooting contest amongst the ECC players and I could put somebody 15 feet from the basket for jump shots, I might choose Emily Obrey. Oh, Emily Obrey from like 15 feet is automatic. Yeah, it's a pretty looking shot. Cotto drives all the way to the basket, no good, bothered by Risley. Risley pulls it down and Stonington, five point lead and the basketball. Spin, basket, Risley, and Coach Solar is so happy. Timeout. Whippets down seven, and let's talk a little bit about what Stonington's done to get that seven-point lead. Well, they're able to get their, they've been able to get the ball to the basket, going to the basket, north-south, driving it in past the Wyndham defense, but really they're doing a good job on the defensive end as well, limiting Wyndham to one shot and they're getting odd man rushes down the court. Offensive rebounds, uh, they've out muscled Wyndham for a bunch of 50-50 rebounds this half, so Wyndham's gonna have to dig in deep here and this is where you, you wanna run a set play. You know, Stonington shown man defense this entire half, looks like they're staying in man. You need a set play here. Get one of your better players an open look, not just going one-on-one -on -one off the dribble. Three and a half minutes without a point for Wyndham. Baseline J, short. Ball on the floor, picked up by Obrey. Obrey, and tapped from behind. Nice job, Rivera tipped it off Obrey, so it will go toward the Whippets. But the Whippets have gone over three and a half minutes, scoreless here. Stonington upping the defensive intensity. Yeah, I think what, what Coach is, is trying to do with this token pressure is get the ball out of Flores' hands. They're really face guarding Flores now. They want somebody else to be the primary ball handler. So once again, that chess game Casey, so that's why it's, it, the pressure isn't there to cause a turnover, it's to make somebody else handle the ball. Yeah, that that's makes a lot of sense, right? Trying to get the ball out of her hands and make somebody else beat you. And so far, Wyndham struggling to find who that person's gonna be. Good job, Rivera. And hands from Pettigrew. Pettigrew's been good on both sides of the floor today. She's a good man-to-man -man defender and doing a good job as the head of the snake, as the point guard for their offense. Yeah, not gonna blow you away with any one individual skill, but rock solid, good decision making, and just kind of understated in her approach. And there's what you need, your best player, get to the basket and get a, and get a you know, couple of points for you as Flores able to break the streak. Yeah, they had the freshman to parry on her and she allowed Flores to go to her strong right side. 
There's Obrey, dump down to Risley, spins, too easy. Rory Risley. Very patient once again, making the extra pass. And if Wyndham's gonna play man like that, they got to front the post. And turnover in the other direction. Stonington up seven with the ball. Hard to believe, but really the defensive intensity of Stonington bothering Wyndham right now. Yeah, Wyndham unsettled, a little frustrated. That pass was made on the move, oh, inaccurate. Uh, I mean, textbook pressure breaking right there by Stonington. Ball never hit the floor. And the bank shot by Caitlin Cadmus gives Stonington its biggest lead of the game. Nine. Can the defending champs come up with an answer? And that's gonna be a reaching foul on Pettigro as she was defending Rivera very tightly. Yeah, Pettigro, excellent man-to-man -man defender, but now she has three fouls, so she's gonna have to be careful. Two and minutes a, left in the third. Of all the people on the floor that I think Stonington is ill afford to lose as well, it's going, it's gonna be Pettigro. She really is, you called her the head of the snake. I think that's a really good uh, way of looking at it. She is their decision maker on both sides of the floor, so. Nine point lead, two minutes and nine seconds remaining here in the third period. So a lot of basketball left to play. I see Stonington having made a couple of adjustments, right? So one of those adjustments was trying to get the ball out of Flores' hands and make Stone, it makes me make Wyndham get into an offensive set without her touching the ball. What can Wyndham do right now to get Stonington out of their rhythm? I think they, they have to play just tight man-to-man -man defense and pressure the ball handlers more. Like, I know you want to trap, you want to get the quick steal, but you really want to just force bad shots and bad decisions at this point so you can get runouts. Another rebound by Cadmus. Pettigrew drives to the basket. Risley with the rebound, she can't get it to go, and Cotto with a nice rebound. Now Flores will push for Wyndham. And that's what th that's what they need to get started. They need to get a miss, and they need to run out and transition, but Stonington does a good job of setting up, and they're back in the 3-2 zone. I, I like Obrey with the length, denying the three opportunity from Flores. Yeah, I, I... Coach Solar has done a great job changing the defenses, and. Now gonna settle in with this lead to the 3-2 zone, which will force Wyndham to use clock to execute. Cadmus with another rebound, and I don't think Coach Solar could have chosen a better end to the third period. A seven point extension of the lead right now, and really in command. This is where you need ball pressure. You gotta pressure these other players that aren't used to handling the ball. Not Pettigrew, but all the other ones. Once they catch the ball, you gotta get up in the shorts and put some pressure on. Roar, Risley, roar. The Bears and Rory Risley are putting on an offensive clue. Yeah, when she gets the ball that close, Casey, it's good night. She's, we're, we're looking at the beginnings of an ECC star. That's right, the emergence in the pregame. George was quick to point out, this is the place where stars are born. Well, I don't know if it's born or made, but Rory Risley on her way. Big performance thus far. Cotto gets the rebound and tips it off of Risley, it looks like. I think it's gonna stay here with 11 seconds remaining. And they're gonna say, nope, Stonington basketball. So 11 seconds and an 11 point lead. Can the Bears get off a shot here at the end of the third period? Oh, good. See, that's a good fake by Pettigro. They thought she was going to reverse it. She kept it. Five seconds remaining. Stripped. Flores, I don't think she'll get a shot off. We're at the end of three. Stonington, eight minutes away from the upset. Join us for fourth quarter action. You're watching Game Day, live on theday.com.
after the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. And check out all the great entertainment coming this winter at Foxwoods. Go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's the Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Contact us today. Visit us at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. So we came out of halftime with a two-point game. Wyndham hit the first shot three-pointer by Haley Flores to take a one-point lead. And then after that, Stonington goes on a run and only one other basket for Wyndham in the entire quarter. An 11-point Stonington lead here heading into the fourth period. Wyndham's going to have to turn up the pressure. So now it's going to become a battle of wills differently than what we saw earlier, right? Can Wyndham get some easy baskets in transition? Can Stonington hold the ball? And I have a question for you after this possession. And Wyndham in the zone right now, and if Stonington was patient enough, they could take a lot of time off the clock. Well, and that's gonna, be, that's gonna be the question I'm gonna ask here after this possession as Rivera has the ball for Wyndham. Nice dump down. And a good finish from Aaliyah Boyd. And that's the question I have is, sometimes trying to protect the lead is detrimental to a team's offensive flow. Does Stonington, so anxious to cut time and run clock, that they kind of get out of their offensive rhythm? It's different with Stone, it could be different with Stonington though, because they have that big presence in the middle. A lot, a lot of times teams will continue to shoot their perimeter shots and they'll shoot themselves right out of a big lead. But if Stonington is patient and just make sure that they get the ball to Risley every possession, they'll be able to run clock and get good shots. Boyd is in the game though, bothers Risley. Risley spins, drops steps, draws the foul and will shoot two. And that's the luxury that Stonington has. Most teams that we see, they're guard oriented. So they have a big lead and now it's the guards want to put on more of a show for the crowd, and, and maybe they miss some shots that they were making earlier, and the other team gets runouts. But Stonington, if they're just patient and work the ball around the perimeter and get the ball into Risley, she's going to get a good shot off, and a lot of the time she's going to get fouled as well. Now, the irony is not lost on me that the Risley name is synonymous with Willimantic Wyndham Sports. The wrestling coach, just congratulations on an excellent season. There's Risleys everywhere. These Risleys, however, on Stonington, no relation whatsoever, because I think that would be like Hatfields and the McCoys. <laughs> Foul on the floor against Wyndham. It'll stay with Stonington as Wyndham's trying to turn up the pressure. So I, it would be ironic that Risleys beat Wyndham as having won so much for Wyndham, but this Risley duo, uh, Adeline the freshman and Rory the sophomore, for Stonington, what I love most about Rory is She's got the footwork of a veteran. Yeah, and when you when you combine her with these other young players, I mean, this is just the beginning of a Stonington team that could be formidable for years to come. Oh, Mackenzie Pettigrew to the basket with three fouls, a little bit gutsy, and it pays off. The lead is back to 11. And she's the senior, and she looks like a senior, right, Casey? Yes. She's out there, and she says, this might be one of my last games that I ever play. There's no way I'm not empty in this tank. Shows what a veteran leader can do. Three, short. And I think Risley is a, a, you know, she's gonna get better because she's gonna grow, but also because th that skill set she has is only gonna get better the more she has time to hone it. And there's a turnover, Wyndham gets the pressure. Driving to the basket. And finishing, Rivera. And you got the feeling Wyndham's got a run in him. Stonington just has to be patient. Two hand catches, ball fakes, strong with the ball. And they did that there.
Wyndham's gonna have to put more pressure on the ball in the half court as soon as it leaves. Another Pettigrew's turnover. Hands. Here comes Flores. Three, short, the rebound Risley. That would have been a big three if Jenkins could have gotten that one to go. Straight on, just a bit short. And I actually think Stonington's better off in some ways getting the ball out of Pettigrew's hands and down as quickly as possible to Risley. Because Pettigrew's got Flores on her. And Flores is playing really good on ball defense. Risley, no foul called, but look at the hustle from Obrey to keep it here with the Bears. Yeah, you know, when we call these games, you know, the enthusiasm usually goes towards the team that's winning, but you know, what a job that Aaliyah Boyd is doing in this second half, just trying to battle with a girl that's got three, four inches on her and, and all this footwork. She's done a good job of slowing her down the last couple of minutes. Good give and go, but the basket was a little bit tight. Other direction now, Wyndham, trying to get it to single digits. Excuse me, trying to get it closer than the nine it is now. And a miss and a foul on the weak side with Pettigrew. All right, so step one, single digits, they got it to nine. Next. And we're gonna get a one and one. And here is where free throws become enormous. Now, Pettigrew missed her two the previous time. And Coach Solar is gonna call, Coach Solar is gonna call a timeout. And talk it over and that's going to be a full timeout and so we'll take a timeout brought to you by the Burns Agency. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19. 32. Four minutes and four seconds separate the Stonington Bears from an ECC Division II championship. Senior Mackenzie Pettigrew at the line, shooting the front end of a one and one. Every point becomes a gift at this point, a nine point lead, and Wyndham hoping for a couple of empty trips from Stonington to see if they can continue to cut into this. This is where Games are won down the stretch at the line. No good rebound, Lebesack. That's an open trip for Stonington. Stonington back in the 3-2 zone. Long three, in and out. Flores had a look. Risley with the rebound. Obrey wisely pulled it out, smart play. Stonington doesn't have to be in a rut. This is where you need to pressure. Pressure the freshman. Dump down, and Risley's gonna get fouled, and she'll go to the line. Here's the one danger for Stonington, and Obrey's 0 for 3 from the line, and I don't get the sense that she's feeling particularly confident from the line, and she's the point guard that's got the ball in her hands. So someone's gonna have to make some free throws down the stretch for Stonington. Again, Grizzly has been pretty solid all game with her free throw stroke. Let's see what happens here. Good call as Grizzly knocks the front end, gets the lead back to 10. 13 for Grizzly. Calmly knocks them both down. 
Lead back to 11. Back to man for Stonington. Long three, no good, rebound, Pettigro. Freshman, to Perry, gives it to Cadmus, now back to Pettigro, and over to Obrey, who's the good person to have the ball, because Obrey can absolutely shoot it, especially from the line, dump down. Risley, basket is good, and Rory refuses to be denied. Just great execution. This Stonington team gives me some of those East Lime boys vibes that we saw last year. The, the high post in Cadmus, ball faking, trying to get it down low, smart guards not trying to do too much, solid man-to-man -man defense. Well coached team we're seeing from the Bears tonight. We got a timeout on the court. We'll take a quick timeout. Brought to you by the Burns Agency. feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 Two minutes and 36 seconds. Stonington with the biggest lead of the game for them. 13. Wyndham desperate. Nice give and go, and Levisak scores at the basket to cut it to 11. Here comes the pressure. Nice job, Risley. Levisak comes from behind with the steal. Is this the run we've been waiting for from Wyndham? Three-pointer, short, but the rebound, Flores, and she saves it to Lebesak. What a play by Haley Flores. Three no good, but the rebound underneath, and a foul. Aaliyah Boyd will shoot two. Wyndham not going away quietly. Yeah, great hustle there from the Whippets to get those extra opportunities, but they have been a team that's kind of lived and died with the three-pointer, and they're just not falling right now. The previous possession, they were able to get a basket going to, to the rim. Lebezak on a, on a nice bounce pass got a layup. So they got to look to maybe get inside, try to get to the free throw line or get a layup instead of settling for all these threes. Don't need them yet. You're down 11. Anything will do. One more for Boyd. That one's good. Pressure from Wyndham. Oh, half a step late. On 148, now goes Cadmus. And we're gonna get a travel on Cadmus. She wanted to get rid of the basketball. 10 point lead, now if Wyndham could ever, I mean, 145 is a lot of time left. We're gonna get a timeout here. And with that timeout, we'll take a timeout one more time by the Burns Agency. You got it better. Better first. Much better. So much better first. Ride insurance at Pride Price. You. you buy better first. You buy better first. You buy better. The Burns Agency can feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Let's set the stage. 10 point lead. Wyndham with the basketball, 145 remaining. 10 might seem like 20 at some times. For Stonington, 10 seems like a basket right now. 
Lebesak breaks the pressure, drives, and oh, had Boyd and just couldn't connect. Stonington trying to break the pressure. They get it across midcourt. And now they get it to Obrey. She's trapped, finds Cadmus. Back to the point guard, Pettigrew. Minute 20, they're gonna have to start fouling soon. Oh, a nice little handoff, Pettigrew to Risley. Good patience by Stonington here. Cadmus has it, high post. And a foul. Cadmus will go to the line, and that's going to be the ninth team foul on Wyndham. So it'll still be a one and one. But more important than anything else, minute and three seconds remaining. Just the amount of clock. I think Wyndham probably would have been better served getting a foul a little earlier. Yeah, I mean it's hard because you know you can't trap this team because you don't have any length compared to them. So they were trying to get a steal, and we would have been better off just fouling and getting that missed. Running the floor up ahead of everybody is Jenkins. The foul will be on Risley, and Jenkins will shoot two. And again, that's another thing you got to be careful about if you're Stonington. You don't want to give any free points to Wyndham. You got a 10 point lead, and you're under a minute. From here on out, Wyndham's going to have to foul, and Stonington's going to be shooting two. So it starts here with Jenkins knocking it down a couple of free throws. First one is true. One more for Anaya Jenkins. Get this down to eight and, you know, see what you can do from there. Can you get a steal? Can you get another basket? It's going to get awfully tight here with a minute remaining. Great job by the sophomore Jenkins knocking them both down. Pettigrew in the other direction. Got a foul. Got a foul. Got a foul now. Get it over to, and they do. They foul Pettigrew. I, I mean, I'd like to see Stonington get the ball in the hands of Obrey and let them come out. Now that you know... Now that you know they're going to have to come out and foul, get it out to Obrey because I know what kind of a free throw shooter she is. But here on out, we got two free throws the rest of the way for Wyndham. Pettigrew 0 for her last three, but the senior with 50 seconds remaining gets a chance to extend the lead. And that one in and out. Her lead remains eight. Yeah, I think at this point, you know, because you a couple possessions ago decided to go for the steal and 30 to 40 seconds came off the clock. Now I think you just, if you're Wyndham, you have to just take your chances fouling and see what happens at the free throw line. Wow, both in and out, but look at the hustle of Risley and Cotto just worked for the rebound. And Levisak's gonna get to the free throw line and she'll shoot two. And no time really off the clock, 40 seconds a chance to get it a little closer. Yeah, great move by Levisak with the step through. And that's the fourth on Risley. Right now, Stonington precarious. When is a seven point lead precarious? When your top player's got four fouls, when you're having problems putting the ball in the basket. One more, and I've been very impressed with the junior, Alyssa Lebesak. She's been fabulous. First, he got an inbound. Freshman has it. Hounded, and they're gonna get a foul. Now, what a spot for the freshman, Lee DePerry. She's gonna go shoot two with 36 seconds and a six-point lead. Just one here would be huge to get this to three possessions. Yeah, that was close to a travel as well, but this freshman, they have a lot of faith in her. She's been out here the whole time in, in crunch time, so. Right now, Stonington has not had a free throw get into the basket. One more for DePerry. And if I were Stonington, I would not have Risley on the line right now. I would not want her getting her fifth in some bad fashion. Oh, for another empty trip for Stonington. Drive to the basket, short. Pettigrew with the rebound. Foul, foul. And they're gonna foul Pettigrew, down to 23 seconds. But as long as it's six, Wyndham's in it. Someone from Stonington's gotta knock down a free throw. They have, if there's been one thing to, to focus on, Stonington has not done a good job from the line down the stretch. 
But Wyndham's still gonna have to make some baskets. So that was an opportunity there, you know, in transition, got a good look. I don't know if that shot got deflected, possibly did, but a, another great rebound by Pettigro. She's played like a senior tonight. Two for Mackenzie Pettigro. That one is important, gets it to three possessions. Coach Solar put both hands to the Mohegan Sun roof. I think she knows that that three possessions is so much bigger. And there's another one for the senior, Mackenzie Pettigro. The lead is now eight. Cotto, baseline, no good. Weak side rebound, Cass and Cadmus will go to the line and she will shoot too. 15 seconds remaining, eight point lead. I'm pretty sure that we are seeing the final moments before Stonington High School will be able to say they are the Division II champions of the ECC. And the majority of the players who have played in this game for Stonington are in their first or second years of high school. So this is a team we're gonna be seeing in big games and late in the season for the next few years. Pettigrew, the only senior on the floor right now for the Bears. Under 10 remaining. Flores drives, good look to Lebezak, blocked by Ridsley. Rebound weak side, it's up. And for the first time in 17 years, under the hot lights of the sun, the Stonington Bears are solar powered. Division II champions of the ECC. Congratulations, Coach Paula Solar and the Stonington Bears. Just a great second half, Casey. They executed the game plan. We heard coach at halftime talking about how they weren't executing the game plan in the first quarter. In the second half, they really executed the game plan to a T. They broke the press. They got the ball inside. They had timely baskets from their, their post players, hit some clutch free throws along the way, and a championship for the Stonington Bears. Congratulations, what a great effort. Emily Obrey and Rory Risley, the dynamic duo sophomores for the Stonington Bears. Coach Paula Soler is a Hall of Famer. She's won state championships. She's got over 450 wins. And I'd be interested to see if she's ever had a group really come together like this Bears team as they ran through the ECC tournament, knocking off the four, the one, and the two to claim a Division II championship. As we announce the 2023 ECC Girls Division II Basketball Tournament All-Tournament Team. From Stonington High School, Mackenzie Pettigro. From Stonington High School, Emily Obrey. Out of Wyndham High School, Haley Flores. Out of Wyndham High School, Alyssa Lebezak. And your 2023 girls basketball MVP from Stonington, Rory Risley. is your all-tournament team. Mackenzie Pettigrew and Emily Obrey from Stonington, and Haley Flores and Alyssa Lebesak from Wyndham. Ladies and, and gentlemen, MVP, Rory Court, Risley Athletic of Director Stonington. Scott Elliott to present head coach Paula Solor. Four of the, the five ECC championship will be returning class. next year. Now the presentation of the championship to coach Paula Solor.
are going to have a chance now to talk with the winning coach as well as the tournament MVP. Our own George Hathaway is with the coach. All of the victorious Bears, the loudest roar of them all. Rory Risley, the tournament MVP. George, take it away. Thank you, guys. Here I am with tournament MVP. Rory Risley, congratulations. It's been 17 years, and you're the tournament's MVP. How do you feel? I feel amazing. I'm so grateful, and I love this team. And I love these coaches, too. You certainly played amazing. 16 points tonight. You certainly made a mark here. What did you have to do to bring your team to victory? I had to work with my teammates. We had to get it into the post. We had to move it around, and we had to follow our plan. And it was certainly a great game plan. I mean, you guys took down the number one team. You guys took down the number two team. How has an underdog mentality kind of defined this team? I'm just living in the moment. I love it, um, especially being the underdog. It's, it's um, rewarding. It's so rewarding, and I'm so grateful. Well, congratulations. I'm going to get a few questions here from Coach. Yeah! I mean, this, <laughs> this is certainly an amazing accomplishment here for you. So just take me through some of the emotions and how you feel right now. Um, I was very nervous today. Um, we had we had some rough patches during the school year, and um, that's what got me nervous because I knew they had it in them, but I didn't know with nerves and never being on this court and Wyndham had. I wasn't sure. That's probably why I was nervous, just because I didn't know sure how they were going to react. But we do have a um, saying. We say pain is. Pain is now, regret is forever. And I talked a lot about that, that all I want you to do is put 100% effort. And whatever happens, happens. But um, you, you can't walk away thinking, I wonder if I should, if I did, I should have done that kind of thing. So um, we talked a lot about that. And I think that's why the toughness came through. Um, but I cannot be more proud of a group of girls that like um, I'm sure you know in the newspaper we were two and nine at one time and we were also uh, I think four and 13 and uh, they just believed in the system and kept on working hard um, a very unique group of girls so um, I'm just really happy for them because we had a lot of bumps and bruises and we started off very shaky so this is a really nice way to end. Certainly is a sweet moment here. Congratulations, Coach, on being Division II ECC champions. Thank you, thank you for the day coverage. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at some of the highlights of the Stonington High School victory. You know, early on in the third period, we really thought Wyndham was going to make a run. They came out hot. But at the end of the day, the inside presence of Rory Risley, the shooting of Emily Obrey, really negated some of the athleticism and some of the scoring that Wyndham had. And at the end of all of it, Coach, Risley was just too much to handle. Yeah, you wonder if you know some of those three-pointers that Wyndham took went down, if it would have changed, like, like Coach Solar said, if it would have changed the nerves. But I think once they were able to grab that lead and, and have a couple possession lead um, and be able to get the ball inside to Risley routinely, not really have any kind of resistance. They were able to operate. It, it must have become just like practice. Like this is what we want to do and they were able to do it. They were able to block out all the distractions and, and execute their game plan. I, I know Wyndham uh, a lot of the time was getting some of the shots that they would like to take. They just couldn't hit them and that's basketball. Um, but when you look at both of these teams, you know, stocked with underclassmen, I mean, it's a rivalry that, you know, we could see in the coming years in this Division II tournament. Well, congratulations to Stonington High School. Eight o'clock tip, the resplendent Mike Morgan and the Ledger Colonels are going to try to go upset City themselves and take down the number one seed New London High School Whalers. That's at eight o'clock. So come on back for that. Congratulations, Stonington. Come on back at eight. You've been watching Game Day live on theday.com.
The following is a presentation of The Day. two weeks with five players. Nalise Dudley and Serenity Lancaster have been dominant, and the supporting cast gritty and timely as the Whalers look to repeat. Ledger has been the hottest team in the league for weeks, and Mike Morgan's team loves to go, go, go. Kiki Kirvin can flat out score, and Monet Ogman locks down opponents for a Colonel team that will try to beat New London for the first time this year. If they do, they are the champs. It has the makings of another classic in this great rivalry. It's the Colonels and the Whalers for the ECC Division I Girls Championship, and it's live on game day on theday.com. It has become a classic rivalry in the ECC. The New London High School Whalers and the Ledger Colonels across all sports have really become special in the ECC, and we expect nothing different tonight. The number one New London Whalers, the defending Division I champs, and the Ledger Colonels at the third seed, and this is for the Division I crown of the ECC, and you'll have it all the action live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All is that is good begins with a smile at Waterford Dental Health. Your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized dental care that you deserve. So contact us today at waterfordentalhealth.com for more information. Casey O'Neill, along with Chris Juicy, we saw the upstart Stonington Bears take the Division II crown. Now here tonight in the Division I crown, a similar feel in that New London, the defending champs, uh, really took it to Ledger in both of their matchups. The first time they beat them by almost 40 points and the second time they beat them by 24. So there's something in the matchup, but Ledger feels like tonight, under these circumstances, on this court, they can take home the Division I crowd. Yeah, I mean, there's not many opportunities that you walk into a casino and you have a stack of house money, but I think Ledger tonight has that kind of feeling of, well, we're not really expected to beat this powerhouse New London team. They beat us twice already. Everybody's betting against us, so let's just go out there and show them what we got. And they're playing some of their best basketball upset. A very, very good Bacon team in the semifinals on Saturday. And, um, you know, late in the season, as we saw with Stonington uh, in the first matchup, late in the season, players are starting to kind of graduate to another level. Uh, they're not playing like they were back in December. And on the other side, when, when we broadcast the New London Bacon game a, a few weeks ago, I said at the end of the broadcast, I'd be very surprised if New London wasn't here at Mohegan Sun. And lo and behold, they held serve, and there's no reason to believe that, until proven otherwise, that they're not the top team in the ECC. Well, our top team here at game day includes the handsome and dynamic George Hathaway. What do you got for us, George? Well, it's a rivalry renewed here at the Mohegan Sun Arena, the Ledger Colonels, New London Whalers. High action, two powerhouse teams. The Colonels coming in this game, taking down Bacon Academy to lead them here. And in New London, there's a lot of confidence within this team. They feel like they can get a win here today and go back to back Division I ECC champions. But the momentum right now is all Ledger. We saw them warming up on the court, lots of conditioning. And this is a bigger team than New London, so you're going to wonder to see if they're going to go to their bench early on with a lot of rest, and they're going to be coming out firing hot. Well, to get here, Ledger had to pull the upset against Bacon Academy, and that's a matchup where Bacon Academy 
really struggled with Ledger all year, lost the last two to Ledger. What Ledger does really well, guard-oriented physical play, gave Bacon fits, but New London has been able to handle it really well and utilize its dynamic duo, Nalise Dudley and Serenity Lancaster. So it's a, it's a tale of matchups. After we come back, we are gonna talk about and break down how Ledger might pull the upset tonight. But first, we're gonna turn it over to Bill Glennie, our public address announcer. Sun Arena for the 2023 ECC Division I Girls Basketball Championship. Game number two features the number three seeded Ledger Colonels. Taking on the top seeded Whalers of New London. Before we meet tonight's starting lineups, I'd like to address your attention to the big board as we meet the players in tonight's game, brought to you by Game Day and The Day. Maggie Dykes, Ledger Center School. Monet Ogman, RMS Elementary School. Faith Dalton, Ledger Center. Adriana Hardison, Preston Veterans. Anna Maynard, Northeast Academy Elementary School. Megan Miller, Gills Ferry Elementary School. Helena Robinson, Naples Italy Child Development Center. Tara McGraw, Legend Center School. Cassie Rice, Gales Ferry School. Kiara Curvan, Gallup Hill Elementary School. Elizabeth Phillips, Legend Center School. Nara Dudley, Nathan Hale Arts Magnet School. Olivia Benjamin, Winthrop Elementary. Nalise Dudley, John Moriarty. Serenity Lancaster, Winthrop Stem Magnet Elementary School. Joy Schneider, RMMS. Tally Souls, RMMS. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our contenders. First, we begin with the number three seed in Ledger. Wins over Killingly and Bacon propelled them to a trip to the sun, wearing their blue jerseys with white and gold trim. 13 and nine on the year, they are led by head coach Mike Morgan. Put your hands together, Colonel Crew, as we introduce your starting five. Starting at guard, a 5'7 freshman, number zero, Maggie Dykes. Starting at guard, a 5'6 senior, number two, Monet Aukman. Starting at guard, a 5'6 sophomore, number 10, Adriana Hardison. Starting at forward, a 5'9 junior, number 22, Cassie Rice. And starting at guard, a 5'6 senior, number 23, Kiki Curvin. This brings us to the number one seed in New London. Knocking off Woodstock and Fitch, punch their ticket to Mohegan. Currently 16 and six on the season, sporting their white jerseys with traditional green and gold trim. They are led by coach Tammy Millsaps. Make some noise, Whaler fans. Here's your starting five. Starting at guard, a 5'7 freshman, number one, Nayara Dudley. Starting at forward, a 5'11 senior, number four, Nalise Dudley. Starting at forward, a six foot one sophomore, number five, Serenity Lancaster. Starting at guard, a five foot seven freshman, number 10, Joy Schneider. And starting at guard, a 5'6 junior, number 11, Italia Sauls. Your officials tonight, Mr. Dan Henderson, Mr. Brian Pierce, and Mr. Todd Morgan.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's anthem being performed by the Legend High School Chamber Choir under the direction of Miss Melanie Cometa. Time for some fresh squeezed juice. Keys to the game are brought to you by the Holy Club, the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut, located at 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Coach, what are the keys to tonight's game? Casey for Ledyard, fundamental. Play fearless and loose, but don't waste possessions. Value the ball with fakes, two-hand passes, and catches. Turn up the heat. Pressure the Whaler guards. Don't let them get comfortable running offense. And don't scuff the paint. Keep NL out of the middle. Make them play perimeter basketball and keep them away from offensive rebounds. For New London, all in with number four and five. Dudley and Lancaster are the two best players in the league. They need to touch the ball every possession. Half is greater than full. Ledyard has a lot of speed and can score and transition quickly. New London needs to get back on defense and make the Colonels execute their half-court offense. And finally, Monopoly boards. Some say defense wins championships, but I think rebounding wins this one, Casey. Use your size advantage to get more rebounds. Referees in tonight's game, Dan Henderson, Brian Pierce, and yes, Todd Morgan. He's here tonight, three for three. The ball is in the air, and Lancaster Wins the tip quickly, it goes to Dudley. Step back three, no good. And the tip, and off goes Kerbin. Kerbin drives to the basket and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Ledger. So we talked about how can the Colonels pull the upset tonight. It starts with go, go, go. The bigger floor of the Mohegan Sun and the conditioning that the Colonels try to bring with a depleted New London team. And London comes out in a two, three zone to start. And out of bounds off the foot of Nyara Dudley, and it'll stay here. A couple of freshmen, Maggie Dykes for Ledger and Joy Schneider for New London in the big spotlight. New London has played a long time with just five, but Keani Allgood is eligible tonight. She's on the bench, she's in uniform. How much she's able to play is to be determined, but having a sixth person, believe it or not, is huge for New London. Imagine they're here in the Division I Finals. They've been playing five for almost a month. Dykes comes down with it for Ledger. Straight away, three-pointer in and out, but the rebound by Ogman and a turnover. And that was a hustle rebound by Monet Ogman, indicative of what this Ledger team plays like. Yeah, they're gonna need to get a lot of those hustle rebounds. But once again, Casey, if, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, uh, a quick three is almost like a turnover and you're gambling. If it goes in, it's great. But if you miss, then you better get that offensive rebound or else New London is out running. Sauls dumps down, Lancaster, Schneider now. She drives all the way to the basket. And every time Joy Schneider scores for New London, it is a bonus. And she's got the first two. Yeah, big bucket for Joy. Whalers in the 2-3 zone. Tempting Ledyard to shoot those perimeter shots. 
Runner in and out, tipped. Hustle rebound, Dykes has it, she spins. And Curvin knocks it down, tying the game at two. Kiki is the heart of this team. The ball has to be in her hands a lot, and she needs to execute, make the right decisions for the Colonels. Ledyard in that aggressive man-to-man -man defense. They'll play you all the way out to half court. Ogden's their best defender. Tries to take on Dudley, and we're gonna get a foul on the floor as Dudley went to the basket. Yeah, and Dudley can do everything. You know, she's the best player in the league, and she can shoot the three, but you do not wanna let her get going north and south to the basket. You'd rather take your chances with her shooting perimeter shots. And it's ironic that the injuries that New London faced this year as Sauls launches a quick three, got it! Molto bene, Italia! Deep. And London's gonna hit those, and it's gonna be a long night for Ledger. Five points, neither by Dudley or Lancaster, right? It's ironic, though, that New London's problems at the point guard position forced Dudley to move out and become a guard, where she probably increased her you know, profile by being able to do guard-like things like that, handle the ball. I mean, going into the year, I think everyone thought of them as like Dudley being the, the super talented wing and Lancaster as the big. And instead, Dudley's had to handle the ball exclusively. And all of a sudden, she's going to college and she's got guard skills now. And I don't know that people necessarily saw her as somebody who could handle a guard type of position. She can shoot the three, and now she's added that handle to the mix as well. And in the new world of basketball, everybody's got to be able to handle the ball now. So, you know, it did help her speed that process up because everybody's got to be able to dribble and make decisions with the basketball. That's just the way the game is played now. Hustle play by Dudley getting her own miss off the free throw. Nayara Dudley. And there's a step in by Kirvin. Kiki off to the races with Lancaster, pulls up instead and knocks it down. Kiki! Great decision with the pull up, not knowing that the taller Lancaster would have the advantage if she took it to the rim. And there's Kirvin with another steal. Dykes with her. Two on one, drives on Sauls. And the Colonels are out and running. And Dykes is a lefty. So you gotta know that in the scouting report. She's gonna go strong left. Lancaster, back to Dudley. Pull up three, in and out. Nice rebound by her sister. Sister act, no good, but one more time. Nayara on the floor. We're tied up, possession arrow favors the Whalers. Great hustle by the younger Dudley, but once again, settling for threes. He just got to the rim a couple times in a row. Don't be so quick to pull the trigger on those long ones. Swing, Sauls, she can shoot it. No good that time. Off of the foot of Ledger, and it'll stay here with New London. Bad luck for Ledger there, air ball, and ball goes back to the Whalers, but yet another three from the Whalers to start the game. That's a violation. No, I think it was never a clean handoff, so they're gonna give him again. Mike Morgan doesn't like it, and we are gonna have to see. If you see that beautiful gold jacket in the background. That's winning time for Mike Morgan on the blazer. Schneider for three, a shot we don't often see, and we're gonna get a frustration foul on Lancaster. And I don't know much, Casey. Uh, I'll be the first to admit, but I know that I want Serenity Lancaster to have the ball, that, that, I, that I know. Dump up top, kick, Kirvin drives over the top of Lancaster. Weak side rebound. Open three is good for Adriana Hardison. One thing about getting to the basket as well, it brings Lancaster out to, to have to defend, and that rebounding suddenly is not as you know, prevalent for New London. Glad you're digging in with their man-to-man -man here. Good help by Hardison as Dykes went down on the discard. And they're gonna get a foul on Nyara Dudley. That was a ill-advised pass from 
Sauls and Ledger, you can't try to go cross court against them. They're so quick. Yeah, you gotta pass one, you gotta make those passes one player away. If you start going two passes away, two players away, Ledger will get into those passing lanes. And London sticking in the 2 3 zone still. Nice look, Kervin. Kiki can score the basket. And the Colonels, exactly what the doctor ordered after a rough start. They got a five point lead and they can feel that they are in it this time. Great look underneath and it goes off Schneider's hands. Great look from Dudley. But keep in mind, on December 15th, New London won 71-34. I mean, that's a, that's a drubbing. And then on January 20th, they won 51-37. So Ledger reduced their scoring by 20. This is a different Ledger team, and the impact is clear early. They're playing with confidence. Kerbin is going to turn it over, and, well, the first answer to our question, a fabulous sight for the Whalers. Sophomore guard forward Keani Allgood is in the game replacing uh, Snyder. This was what was supposed to be the original five for the Whalers. 9-0 run for the Colonels. Lancaster gets it at the foul line, dumps down to Dudley. And a nice follow. Nali Studley with the rebound off her sister's miss. Much easier to get an offensive rebound off of a two-point shot than a long three. Well, that's good ball movement by the Colonels, but it's on the floor where it's anybody's tie-up possession arrow favors the ledger. Possession arrow the Colonels. By the way, in the coaching intensity meter, two of the most intense coaches, Tammy Millsaps, Mike Morgan, they will be coaching They'll be burning off about 2,000 calories each <laughs> coaching this game. Travel by the freshman, Dykes. I mean, Coach Millsaps is nonstop frenetic and energy, and Coach Morgan doesn't sit. So, I mean, these two are going to be coaching full time tonight. Yeah, and it, and it reflects in their team's play. It's the passion, the energy. You see it from the players on the floor. Augman doing a great job on Dudley. Dudley gets in the basket though, spins, right hand, no good. Augman did a good job taking the left away and unfortunate for Ledger Robinson on the line and it will stay with New London. That was a great move by Dudley who also has the is left-handed and did a good job shutting it off. Swing, Nayara Dudley for three, no good, look at up top, rebound. Welcome back, Keani Allgood. When she does that, it's all good. And that's gonna be something that Ledyard cannot let happen as this game goes on. They cannot let New London get offensive rebounds. New London staying in the zone. Augman drives, and I think he got fortunate there because Lancaster stepped in for the block, but we're gonna get a foul called on Sauls. They're gonna say basket is two shots in the process of shooting, so two shots here for Monet Ogden. Right now, the team's still kind of in that settling mode. I know that we're almost done with the first quarter, but kind of feeling each other out, those early rounds of a heavyweight fight. The advantage that the Colonels have is they can make a lot more substitutions, and they're, they're rotating fresh legs in to keep this ball pressure on. And London has not been able to get the ball to Lancaster in the low block yet. I love Augman's just determination on Dudley. Dudley uses their height, step back, no good. Lancaster tracks the rebound down, finds Dudley, cuts to the basket. She'll draw the foul and she'll shoot two. Nalise Dudley gets to the line for the Whalers. 
But I love Augman taking it personal. She's at half court. She's down Stacy Augman style, mm. looking to defend. Not many of our viewers may know who Stacy Augman is, but I do. Casey, That's right. So I made I made that reference for you. Thank you. For you and you alone. But a, a subtle play by Serenity Lancaster get got the rebound, got it up high immediately, pivoted and turned, and it's just like they've been playing to each with each other for years. It just. A nice cut to the basket by Dudley. Lancaster finds her for the foul. Both free throws are good, and it's a one-point game. Just under a minute remaining here in the first period. Highly competitive. We were hoping it would be, thinking it would be. Hasn't let us down so far. And London staying in this, this zone. Curvin pulls up from the elbow. First thing she's missed tonight, and Lancaster with the rebound. Dudley has it, 34 seconds remaining in the period. They got a mismatch now. Curve and guard and Lancaster, gotta get her the ball. Gotta get her the ball. Now they double her though. There goes Sauls, there's the dump down. Lancaster has it in the paint. Weak side rebound, all good. No good, weak side rebound, all good. Blocked. Ledger with a chance, under 10 seconds remaining. Here comes Curvin to the basket. Kiki can't get it to go. One last attempt, knocked out of bounds. We are at the end of one, and it's going to be a good one. Come on back. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. The Holy Club, the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut. Featuring Foresight Sports Simulator technology, you can test your game on the greatest courses in the world. Want to improve your swing? Schedule a lesson with their on-site PGA Pro. Want to host an event? The Lounge offers the perfect setting to watch all the big games. Gift cards are available and make the perfect stocking stuffer for this holiday season. Don't wait. Stop by the Holy Club, 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Pave the way for your student's financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. One point, alleged lead as we're about to start the second period here in the Division I Championship game of the Mohegan Sun. You see the New London cheerleaders out at center court. What a fabulous Saturday we had last Saturday, Juice. And I tell you, you know, as much as I love basketball, and I do, and I love all the other sports we do, but the cheerleading is an event in itself. And everybody should, get, should try to get out and see the ECC cheerleading championships or watch them on game day because these, these athletes in cheerleading now are off the charts good. Uh, and so it was the Whalers, of course, brought it as well. And we had a great time. Uh, on Saturday, East Lime, Waterford, and Plainfield, and ultimately Waterford took home the ECC Cheerleading Championship. Here we've got New London and Ledger. Earlier, Stonington defeated Wyndham in our D2 Girls Championship game. Nali Studley will inbound right here in front of our table. Up high, she turns it over, but a fortunate bounce. We got a tie up, and that possession arrow will favor Ledger, but. Ledger's defense and pressure is definitely bothering the Whalers. Yeah, and, and, and that's gonna be the key to success, is just keep forcing New London to make decisions that are difficult for them. Augman over Lancaster. Lancaster with the rebound, here comes Dudley. I know that Kiki Curvin is an intense competitor, but you gotta get Lancaster on the block and get her the ball. I mean, he just, she's got six inches on her. All good. Puts it to the basket, drives, can't get it to go, tipped. And out of the pack comes Augman. Augman. And Dudley blocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Colonels. No easy baskets right now for either team. Both teams really playing intense defense. 
London's gonna match up man to man here out of the baseline, out of bounds play. And a nice pull up, knockdown from Adriana Hardison on the baseline. Five for Hardison. London looks a little bit out of sync here with their half court offense. Dudley drives, foul, and she'll go to the basket. And that's been the best offense for New London so far, is Nalise Dudley getting to the basket. But they're gonna have to find a way, as you've mentioned, to get Serenity Lancaster involved. But in the meantime, Dudley kind of keeping them hanging around right now, cutting into a three-point lead. Yeah, or at least getting those types of shots and letting Serenity get some offensive rebound opportunities. You know, that that's where she makes a lot of her buckets off of getting those second, third chance opportunities. She hasn't really been given a chance to show what she can do on the offensive glass yet because New London's uh, settled for a lot of wild threes. Dudley misses both. Uncharacteristic for Nalis. Curvin. Augment. No good, rebound all good. Dudley wanted to get her sister, she saw her. Mm. Wisely though, that would have been a difficult pass to catch, let alone throw. Oh, that's a great screen. Dudley gets it back. Step back, college three, no good. I think she doesn't have to, she has another two feet she can move in. Curvin pulls up on Sauls. Good! Kiki. Knocking it down, Curvin leading the Colonels. They have a five point lead. Yeah, and the, the mid range jumper is on for Kiki. She's got eight. All good. Passes to Sauls. Step back three, short. Rebound Robinson. And Ogman loses it out of bounds. Whalers catch a break. Dykes will come back into the ball game for Ledger. Cassie Rice, who was playing very good defense on Sauls, will have a seat. And once again, Ledger can rotate fresh legs into the game. New London cannot. They're gonna have to get through this. And now the one thing about New London, they've gr grinded out a lot of games this year. They, they're not gonna panic. There's gonna be no panic in this team. Um, but you can't get, you can't dig yourself too deep of a hole. Dudley squares up on Augman. Looking for Lancaster, she's got good position this time. Kick out, Nayara Dudley for three, no good. Nalise with the rebound, goes up, no foul. Tipped around, basket is good by Lancaster and the foul. Serenity draws the foul, inserts herself, and a big possession for the Whalers. And that's what she can do, you know. I, I think it all started with just getting her that first touch. Inside out three. It missed, but she's down there in the low block, Casey. She's in position to get an offensive rebound. When she's setting these high screens, and then you shoot a three off of her high screen, how's she gonna go get the offensive rebound off of that? Dykes, nice job by Dudley, cutting her off. Now, Curvin. This is like a 1-3-1, one, one, though. This is not, a, this is more of a 1-3-1 one, one cause, cause Nalis is running corner to corner. Uh, it's like a passive 1-3-1, one, one, and Ledyard's just trying to bait, I mean, uh, New is trying to bait Ledyard into shooting those perimeter shots. Lancaster has it at the elbow. Dud Dudley, Nayara, drives, and that goes up top of the backboard, so Ledyard will have the basketball. Rice checks back into the game, rotating with Helena Robinson. As much as it feels like Ledyard's dominating this game, you look up at the scoreboard, it's, it's only a two-point lead. So, so watch this on the bottom, you have, you have Nalise going corner to corner. And it, it's almost like a 3-1-1. Just trying to keep everything in front, make Ledyard shoot these jump shots. Augment, bank is open over Lancaster. And if they hit those jump shots, New London's gonna have to rethink what kind of defense they're gonna play. Now Lancaster's got good position, gets it in good position, spins, and good defense, but that's the shot you want. It's gonna stay with the Whalers. That's the shot you want from Serena Lancaster. That time she dug down 
and got into good position. Yeah, I don't, I mean, she just missed that one. I, don't, I mean, you give credit to the defense, but she just missed that one, and that's the shot you want to live with. That's a nice inbounds play, rolling to the basket. Lancaster catches it from Dudley and scores. And on the other direction, there's Nayara Dudley. And Nalise Dudley comes out of the pack with it. So dangerous. Nalise Dudley pulls up just inside the three-point line. No good. Tipped out of bounds off of all good. Once again, it's a, it's a subtle thing, but and it's probably a great shot in rhythm for her, following shot. But when she shoots that shot, Serenity's at the top of the key. She's still in she's just still transitioning. I'd like to see a little bit more of a half court set for New London. I know they like to play fast and that's their mentality, but Serenity is by far uh, the best interior player on the court tonight. Good hands, Whalers with the steal, Sulls dumps down, Lancaster, great position, scores over Dykes and we're tied at 19. She's so strong, you know, it you don't, you look at her and might not notice it, but she's so strong with the ball. It's the hands, Casey. The hands are so strong. She grabs it, and she's just able to get it up high and finish with ease. Augman floated it. No good. Lancaster with the rebound, and the Whalers with a chance to impri I mean, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Take the lead. Feels like they were down a lot, and they never really were. They've kind of settled it back again. Here we are with two and a half minutes remaining in the half, and we're back to a 19-19 game. And just, I, I really think executing in the half court, making Ledyard have to defend multiple passes. Dudley to the basket, offensive foul. Great job, Maggie Dyke, standing her ground, taking the charge. And in high school, that basket does not count, even if the ball was released before the contact. So the, you see there in the replay, the ball was released before contact, but in high school, it doesn't matter. No basket. Augman. Schneider back in the game for the Whalers. Three, got it! Hardison knocks down the triple and the Colonel's back on top. A second big three from her, and that's gonna help their offensive chances. And another offensive foul on Dudley. Another charge taken by Dykes. That's the second on Nalis. Ledger has said, let her go and we'll stand our ground. Yeah, that's good man-to-man -man defensive principles. And there you see in the replay, I mean, that's good on any level. High school, college, and the pros outside the restricted area. Had legal guarding position before the defender went vertical. Before the offensive player went vertical, rather. No good and Nice hustle play on the weak side from Rice. Curvin pulls up, no good. Dudley with a strong rebound. Now she's going to try to run. Got to be careful here. She's got a couple of fouls. Lancaster took it away from Schneider and finished. Once again, those strong hands. Nine points in the last three minutes, Casey. Like I said, I don't know much. Augman, basket is good, and the foul. They're gonna get the foul that time on Lancaster. And a strong finish from Augman. And every time New London punches back, Ledger throws another one of their own. And that's good. And just like that, a four-point lead for the Colonels. So, this definitely is, a different game than the first two. Yeah, this is a different Ledyard Colonel team. The intensity, you see it in their eyes. Lancaster, kick out, swing to Sauls for three. No good, and Dudley could not push for that offensive rebound with the two fouls. Dykes is a lefty, good job by Dudley there. To Cut off the left hand. 
Coach Morgan wants one shot here with a four point lead and 38 seconds remaining. And they might be able to do it because this New London team's not really gonna come out and play them. I think this is smart. Take advantage of the high school rules. Guarantee yourself at least a four point lead going into halftime. Dudley's got the assignment, Nyara Dudley's got the assignment on Kervin. Rice almost turned it over. Instead, it goes to Osman. She drives, kicks. Hardison for three. That's going to be long. Right in the hands of Kervin. No good. And Lancaster comes down with it. And that's going to get us to the half as Dudley's shot will not count. A four-point ledger lead at the half. And coach, improbable, but this Colonel team, which lost by a combined, you know, 80 points in two games, has a four point lead at halftime. Yeah, this, the mentality is different. You, you see it in their eyes, the way they're competing. Uh, and they've come out and they've executed in the way that, you know, many expected that they would, given what they did to Bacon the other day. Um, coming out and picking up kind of at half court, intense man-to-man -man defense, um, and fearless on offense. Getting it into the middle against the New London zone, and, and able to hit some timely threes. Adriana Hardison hitting some big three-point shots. and A four-point lead, many might be surprised, but given what we saw, I'm not surprised at all. George, what does Coach Morgan have to say? Coach Morgan, it's been in a very intense first half, to say the least. But I mean, what has been the game plan to really stop Lancaster and Dudley for you guys? Because defensively, you guys have been doing a great job. The, the whole goal is just keeping them off the boards. Um, second chance points is really, 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 excuse me, where they kill. So our goal is making sure we're getting a body on the big girls. We're getting a body on Nalise, getting a body on Serenity. And that's, that's really our strong points right now. We've been focusing on that for about the last two weeks because we knew this matchup was going to come down to this. Uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, nope. oh no, because you know, first game I don't know if you guys noticed they they had 60, 66 rebounds between the three of them. Second game wasn't that much better, so you know we figure if we can control the boards, we we give ourselves a good chance to to be in this game. Awesome, thank you so much, Coach. Good luck. All right, we are at halftime. 37 point loss the first time, 14 point loss the second time, four point lead at halftime. Come on back. We're at halftime. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. It's great. It's amazing because that's like my twin on the court, having her, knowing that she's another version of me, just a little version of, of her. She's a great ball player and she just reminds me of me. I enjoy it a lot because she knows what I can do on the court. So like she'll give me the ball and stuff. And like she'll look for me to like give me an opportunity on the court and stuff like that basically. And it's fun. This is my first year playing with her. And you guys play more than just basketball together, right? Um, yeah, volleyball. We did wrestling together, baseball. We did soccer together. I quit, I didn't like it. I went to football. Rec basketball. Oh, and wrestling, but she boxed. We wrestled at the same gym. She's crazy, but she's such a caring and loving person. She'll always step out of her way to do something for someone else. She's just like a person who'd always want to be around all the time. Like if you're ever down, like she's just the person that will give you the energy. She's funny, rude. Sometimes she, she gets on my last nerve, so she's kind of annoying. And she just got like a big personality. Like just being outgoing, being able to act how she wants to act around people and she's not trying to fit in anywhere. She's a dog on the court, a dog. She's gonna wanna go for every loose ball. She's gonna be in your face. I'm usually always on the floor, especially in basketball. So it's kind of just what I do. 
she can do whatever she wants to do on the court, which I want to be able to do that, but I'm mainly a defender. I wish I had her defense. I, I have pretty good defense, but her mentality is just more different than mine. She has more of that dog mentality. What'd you think when she scored her thousand point? I was hyped for her. And then people in the crowd was counting it down. So it was like, okay, and the game was getting more hype. It was just a great feeling just having my sister on the court with me and having her to just experience what I felt and for her to be able to carry it with her. Hopefully when it comes to her senior year, she can hit her thousand. He's gonna be like a junior in college, I think, when I'm a senior. So yeah, she at least better be there. Oh, like what? After the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. And check out all the great entertainment coming this winter at Foxwoods. Go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's the Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Well, Lindsay is a very special player. Uh, she doesn't get a lot of playing time. Uh, this is her senior year. She hasn't been able to make the team every year. So we put her on this year, and she has gone above and beyond. I love the friends I make in volleyball. Um, I want to be a bright light in a dark room. If the team is down, I want to be the person that they'll come to, to look up to, and to make everyone smile. I just love cheering, even when I'm not on the court. I love being the loudest person in the gym. What makes Lindsay special is her spirit. She brings laughter, she brings team unity. Uh, she is the, the white part of the Oreo, if you will. She keeps the team together and that's something that doesn't show up in stats books or doesn't make the paper, but as a coach that deserves every bit of recognition because that's chemistry is key in volleyball and uh, Lindsay helps us with our chemistry. Like two years ago, um, my dad committed suicide and I, don't want anyone to feel like that. And I want to make sure that I'm always a bright light that people can come to. I want to make sure that I'm always a positive person. I don't want anyone to ever feel upset when they're around me. So I try and make sure that wherever I'm going, I'm always you know, a positive outlet that anyone can go to. I like to make myself open to everyone. So she actually sets the example. Uh, pretty much everyone else gets in the game in some fashion. They have different roles. And to see her sitting there always cheering, always motivated, always up, it keeps them up. And again, in a game where you can have ups and downs, having someone that's a constant up motivator is huge. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. I've been wrestling since I was like two or three. In her freshman season at Ledyard, Tatiana Irizarry is already a contender for the Colonels heading into this weekend's ECC tournament. My brothers both did it. They like started when they were five, so just my dad was coaching and I would run around their practices. I don't know. I guess I just like enjoyed beating up on people. I don't know. I had a weird sense of humor. She's had some good role models along the way. Her brother Jeremiah is a senior on the East Lime Norwich Tech Co-op. And teammate Linda Holman won a state title in Connecticut's first girls' invitational. I've known Linda for a few years. We wrestled in youth together, so it helps having, like, when I first came here, it helped having familiar faces. How has she grown? Uh, I don't know she's grown on us. At first, she was a little quiet. Um, kind of reserved, stayed to herself. And now uh, she's always in my ear asking me things, you know, about what she should be doing in certain situations on the mat. Um, she's always looking to improve and learn. So that's one thing that she has come far with um, in terms of uh, being quiet at the beginning and then opening up and really trying to get herself better. While wrestling is still mostly a boy's sport, it's not that novel anymore to see girls out on the mat. 
what would be a first, though, is a female ECC champion. Yeah, the abundance of uh, girls coming out for, for wrestling is more and more. Um, I can see it is, uh, you know, uh, all around the nation, it's, it's, it's taken an, a hold and, and girls are coming out for wrestling. Um, you know, the Olympics helped, having the girls in the Olympics um, that opened up a lot of girls' eyes for uh, female wrestling. And, uh, you know, it's come a long way. I don't know if my program's any different than anyone else's. Um, I just feel like, uh, you know, a wrestler's a wrestler. I don't treat them any different. Boy, girl, there's no difference. Four point lead for Ledger at halftime, and the first half really was kind of a mixture of things as far as Ledger getting to the basket better than New London did. Early on, New London had some good opportunities. We thought that they might have the recipe, but Ledger was relentless getting to the basket. Yeah, and as Coach Morgan said at halftime, one of the big keys for them was hold New London off of the offensive glass. They've done a good job of that. And the other thing is defensive intensity. They've been good on the perimeter. And even better than that, they've had good help side defense, Casey, picking up a couple charges, but also just making things difficult for New London whenever they do get by the primary defender. So the man-to-man -man defense and the, the scrappiness on the rebounding, in the rebounding action has been the difference uh, for Ledyard in this game. Well, Kiki Kirvin, consummate leader, senior for a young Ledger team. It's her and Monet Ogman, right? The two seniors leading a young group. On the other side of things, he talked about the two best players, right? Dudley and Lancaster. We saw glimpses when Lancaster was able to get the ball in good position. There's no answers for that. So second half, right? It's can New London continue to give good looks for Lancaster? And can Ledger keep getting good looks in general? Right away, they went right into Lancaster. All good drives, no good. Gets her own rebound, fights, and she's gonna draw the foul and go to the line. So good work from Keani, from Keani all good. You see how good Lancaster is? She, she gets the great high-low play by Coach Millsaps to start the second half, first of all. And then she throws it out immediately for a repost. So she throws it out and she gets a little bit deeper position, but there was a little fumble on that exchange from all good or else Serenity would have had an even better post opportunity. But all good scrappy with the offensive rebound got herself to the free throw line here. Uh, gotta knock one of these down though, missed the first one. Second one is short, tipped around and Augman ripped it out of her hands and here comes the Colonels. Good hands from Dudley. New London seems comfortable getting the ball out of Dudley's hands. Normally they like to have it in her hands. They want Lancaster, or they had her. Up top, looking for a screen. Dudley gets it, now looking to go to the basket. Lancaster wants the ball, they double team her. There goes Salz. Little floater, no good. And the put back from Lancaster. But a good decision by Sauls. Shot fake, they think she's gonna shoot a three, shot fake, and drives it in. Kervin loses it, Dudley picks it up. Remember she has the two fouls off of the charges. Finds her sister, and Nayara Dudley ties us at 25. Great pass, older to younger. Sibling rivalry. Two tough defenders guarding each other, Dudley and Augman. Artisan kicks, straight away shot, no good, and out of bounds, it'll be Whaler basketball. Yeah, so now Ledyard, you know, now that they've lost their lead, they have to find a way to get it back into their star player's hands. And I know that th their offense is more equally distributed, but I think they need to get it to Kiki and let the offense run through her whenever they need a bucket. 
Dump down, Lancaster. Baseline with the friendly roll. She gets down there, it's gonna be a long second half for the Colonels. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say that anybody's better than Elise, but I mean, she's just fantastic. All the way to the basket and a foul. I know we're gonna call a jump ball. All good, tied up Hardison. Possession arrow stays here with Ledger, but that's a nice defensive play from Keani Allgood. Yeah, and those, and those role players on New London, they know their job. And that's that's what's made this team special this season, is that those other three players know what they have to do. Hustle rebound from Rice. There goes Ogman to the basket. No good, Lancaster. Got a piece of it. And she'll bring the ball up. Sauls, transition three. Got nothing but the bottom of the net. And a timeout, Mike Morgan. As just like that, five point lead for New London. And that timeout is actually coming from New London. So New London in a transition, five point lead, takes the timeout. Obviously, there's something she wants to set up. Yeah, I think, you know, just making sure that the defense is solid, like they know their game plan on defense because you don't want to allow Ledger to gain any more momentum here. And, and everybody everybody has their opinions on if you should call a timeout after your own main basket. I would do it a lot if I needed to set up a different defense. So that's usually why I would call it. I'm not sure what Coach Melsaps has uh, in mind right now, but. You know, the one thing that has been very impressive, there's so many impressive things that you could say about this New London Whaler team, but I think the most impressive is that they've grinded out games with six players all season, you know, five, six players all season. So they're, they're you know, no stranger to having to play from behind. It's that they don't always come out and blow teams out. So they're, they know how to play these tight games. They're in man. So there is a switch. Interesting though, they have Dudley on Curvin. Now that they have the lead, Coach Millsaps must have realized that she, this was the time to switch up the D. Good drive to the basket by Dykes, but Lancaster is there. Up ahead to Dudley. Dudley, jump shot, no good. Lancaster there for the rebound, no good. All good with the putback, no good and a tie-up possession arrow favors New London, but there's the offensive rebounds that Coach Morgan said they can't allow New London work in the glass. Yeah, Lancaster got two, and Allgood got one on that possession alone. Long three for Dudley, no good. Sauls can't get there, and I don't like that shot, and I think Nalis knows it and is hearing about it as well. Another reason I like the timeout off the make, by the way, is New London needs to strategically take its timeouts with the under, you know, to give their kids some gas, you know, a little bit of gas in the tank. All good with the steal. Here comes Dudley. Up ahead of everyone, no good, and she'll go to the line as Augman draws the foul, or Dudley draws the foul on Augman. I think, you know, playing those six players, we talked about the bigger court and the intensity. I think calling the timeout too, just to give her a little, give their team a little, you know, quick breather, change your defense, grind to a point, because you know, there's no TV timeouts here in high school basketball, so they're gonna be playing whistles only. Although I will say, and you correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't look like New London's tired. I, and the least Dudley just looked faster just now than she did at any point in the game. I, you know, I think they're just used to playing uh, with, with limited substitutions, limited rest, and, and they're built for this. Ledger still without a point here in the second half. Dudley, though, needs to knock down free throws. Missed them both. That's the second time the lease has gone empty. Here comes Kerbin in the other direction. And we're gonna get a travel. Big jumps, two steps, and I don't know, I didn't see it, but Dan Henderson was there and he had the call. Mike DeMauro nods, yes. talked about New London grinding out victories and grinding out games this year. Part of that was an incredible schedule as Dudley gets to the basket. It's good and the foul. Nali says, give it to me and one. 
Biggest lead of the game for the Whalers is seven. Dudley will not be denied. Strong to the basket. Yeah, both, both Dudley and Lancaster, their hands are so strong that slapping them on the wrist does little to affect their shot. There it is. They played the Whalers an incredible schedule this year. Very typical Tammy Millsaps. She's always liked to play a global schedule. New London played the best teams from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New York, and that's designed to win a state championship in Connecticut, but it also steals you for a game like this. Absolutely, and yeah, I mean, I, I can't compliment Coach Millsaps enough on how she's been able to manage this team all season long with, without substitutions, without, without players to substitute into the game. And, and think about practice, Casey. She has to use her assistant coaches, uh, Cora Sawyer and Jada Lucas, to play on the scout team. Uh, I mean, they, they can't have a five-on-five -five scrimmage in practice. Well, first of all, two state champion Whalers. Second of all, I was told that the New London girls in preparation for this game practice with the boys, which I think you know is, is common these days. Dudley with a long three, that's gonna be short. Tipped around, Augman's gonna come out of it. Augman, foul is on Saul's basket good, and Monet Augman will go to the line. Coach Millsaps is hot. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you have to live with your star player's decisions. I mean, that's just how the game is these days, and Nalise was feeling it. She just had an and one. Things are going her way. She wanted to take that three-pointer, and it, a long miss leads to a run out, and Monet made her pay. I would remind Nalise that she had just gotten an and one. Get to the basket. Well, you, you can do the reminding. I'm, I'm going to stay out of that. I will do that <laughs> well after this game is over. Saul's being hounded. Great defense by Dykes. Close to a five second. Dump down to Lancaster, finds all good. Nice defense from Augman on the weak side help. Curvin, and she's gonna travel again. Slid the foot on the jump stop. Yeah, it was close, but that was the right call. Once again, it slid. I like the camaraderie though, right? So the New London boys, ranked two in the in the com upcoming ECC tournament, looking for a championship of their own and take a practice day to go against the New London girls to get them prepared for this game. That's, I like that community, you know, when schools and, and teams do that. Absolutely. Nyara Dudley to the basket, no good. Rebound, all good. Weak side, puts it back. All good has been great on the boards tonight. Stole that offensive rebound from her teammate Lancaster. And what a difference when she's on the floor for New London. They become bigger, they become much more offensively minded on that glass. And bail out there. That looked like it was gonna be a pass. Let's see what Brian Pierce rules here. So, underneath. That's on Dudley and that's her third. She doesn't think that's on her. He wants, she wants it. That wasn't on her. I mean, no, that's it what she's saying. It absolutely wasn't. But that's called on her, and that's all that matters, and that's her third. It's not like picking. Now, Brian Pierce is going to go over. He realizes it. Former East Lime great back in the day, Mr. Pierce. Played on some of those real tough East Lime teams. We'll see what he's. He's telling Coach Morgan and Coach Millsaps, I got the wrong player. They're gonna figure it out right now. Coach Henderson, excuse me, official Henderson, telling him as well. Yeah, so the foul was switched from Dudley to Allgood. Good job by the officials. Great job. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a, a call that could affect the whole game. It's gotta get it right. Hardison, step back three, no good. Rebound battled for underneath. Dykes, good effort. And a timeout from Coach Morgan. And with that timeout, we'll take a timeout. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Feel 
it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. I would not ever, ever want to be on the receiving end of a Coach Millsaps. <laughs> You're not Just built a, for that, Casey. I, I, would wither, I would wither like a dandelion in a strong spring breeze. But that's why these players can, can handle some adversity on the court. You know, it, it, have it, you ever seen a high school player racking sobs and sucking their thumb <laughs> on the bench? Because that's, she would just look at me and I would immediately, I would be just a hot mess. Uh, it's a good dump down, Hardison. Can't get it to go, rebound, all good. All good's been fabulous for the Whalers here tonight. Absolutely. Her first action in quite a long time. Little give and go, Lancaster to Dudley. Dudley, strong move to the basket is good. Nalis Dudley gets the Whalers back on top eight. Five to four. Those two look like they've been playing together for years. And it really shows you what two truly great players can accomplish with the role players around them know what their jobs are. Absolutely. In no other sport is that more true. Maybe softball. My wife was an all-state softball pitcher. Maybe if you have that great softball pitcher, maybe a one hitter, maybe, but in basketball, you get two good players and you, you build a concept of roles and togetherness and, and you can go far. Travel on the Whalers. Dudley traveled before she got it. She was trying to get it up ahead to all good. But I mean, you look at the team that's on the floor right now. Nayara Dudley is out there to play defense. Sals is out there to manage the team and shoot open look inside out threes. All good is there to get all the dirty stuff, right? The, the re second chance rebounds and things like that. And everything else is Dudley Lancaster. Dudley Lancaster inside, outside, however they have to do it. And so they're, they're gonna score, you know, 45 to 60 points between them. And everybody else just does their jobs. And when all good contributes 10 points and 10 rebounds, you know, all done on hard work, Sauls knocks down a couple threes. And you see why this team is, can be so good. And, and, that, and the brilliance of it, Casey, not to overstate, you said it perfectly, but the brilliance of it is that those role players are, are really happy with their roles. They're not complaining that they should be getting more shots or doing something else. They're really proud of the roles that they have. That's what the, is so beautiful about how this New London team operates. Ledger needs to get the ball to the basket. There goes Augman, kick out, jump shot. That's a good look. And we're gonna get a late bailout foul as Hardison went to knock it down and got a push. Fouls on all good, her second. So Hardison will shoot two. And this is exactly what Ledger needs. Down eight, couple of free chances here at the free throw line, cut into this lead. Yeah, and this game's far from over. I know we just sang the praises of New London like the last 30 seconds of the fourth, but there is a full quarter left and Ledger has the ability to hit outside shots, we've seen that. A couple three-pointers, a couple bad passes, or bad shots from New London, and this game can be tied in a few minutes. Now, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. We saw Coach Morgan say one shot to the end of the half. I think New London might be looking for one shot here, up six to go in this fourth quarter, up six or more. Yeah, I, I, without the shot clock, why not? Why not? Now, Ledyard has played a little tighter on the perimeter, which forces you to operate quicker. Up, Sauls had a look, here comes Curvin. Curvin to the basket on Sauls. And at the end of the third quarter, it's just what the Colonels needed. They cut it to four. Fourth quarter should be fun. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. After the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. And check out all the great entertainment coming this winter at Foxwoods. Go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's the Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. All that is good begins with a smile. 
At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Contact us today. Visit us at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. A crowd of 1,616 people on attendance here tonight. And they are watching the New London High School Whalers currently with a four-point lead. But talk a little bit about what could have been and what was at the end of the third period. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to take the last shot, it, you got to make sure it's the last shot. And I thought that three-pointer was taken a little bit too early. And it allowed Ledyard to get a run out. And Saul's knowing that she doesn't want to foul. Uh, let Curvin go to the basket. She was able to finish the layup, so that's a lot of momentum now. And the start of the second half, the ball will belong to the Colonels, so that's possibly a five-point swing here if, if Ledyard gets a three-point play or a three-point shot. That goes in, it's a nine-point lead. Instead, it's a four-point lead, and it gives Curvin a, a basket, which she needed to get going back into this thing. She's been quiet in the third period. She has the ball now, guarded by Dudley. Dykes for three, short, and it'll be New London basketball. It was brought to our attention that if we did have the New London boys and the New London girls playing in an actual game, like the practice the other day, that would be Coach Millsaps and Coach Parker. The gym would be uh, very quiet. <laughs> there would be absolutely no, no yelling, no yelling going on. It's a lot of wins. Dudley. All the way to the basket, can't get it to go. She had a great look. Oh. Curvin, quick trigger, no good, but gets her own rebound. Crossover. No good again, this time all good, pulls it down. Du now Lancaster two on one with Dykes. Offensive foul, that's the third one that Dykes has taken tonight. Maggie Dykes stands her ground. You know, players that take charges, that's part of who they are. That's their identity, you know. As much as you can teach it and emphasize it in practice, there's just, from my 20-something years of coaching, there's just certain players, they seek out the charge. It's, they just have a knack for taking it. And, and we're seeing a young player here, a freshman, that knows how to take it. Oh, uh, Nayara Dudley baited that one, got the steal. Other direction, Melise Dudley back to Nayara. Nayara, step back three, no good. All good, tied up with Augman. Possession arrow favors New London. Hustle points there. I want to, again, not only is Maggie Dykes built and taking these charges, she's a freshman. That's a lot. I'm impressed. You know, you're at Mohegan Sun on this stage, you're a freshman, and you're like taking beat down charges. Lancaster for three, no good, but there's all good weak side with a putback. Hardison's gonna draw the foul on Allgood. She'll go to the line to shoot to. Another good young player in Hardison here. Only a sophomore, so. We were talking about that between games, Coach. The, the league on both the boys' and the girls' side is just littered with good young players, particularly freshmen and sophomores. And there's not a lot of seniors. There, each team, you can pick a, a senior or two but for the most part, it's younger, and that was brought to my attention again that this senior class is the COVID class. It is. This it is. is the class that lost, you know, a year and a half of their of their high school life to COVID, and it, a lot of players didn't get to their, you know, to where they are now. So for every Marissa Nudd and Nali Studley and Kiki Curvin, there's like six sophomores on every team. We keep talking about how every team is young as a freshman. Nayara Dudley knocks down the J. We keep talking about how every team is young, right? We said, well, Wyndham's gonna be back. They've got all these players. And oh, look over there, Stonington's gonna be back and they've got all these players. Well, you look at, at New London and yet, yeah, Nalee Dudley is a, a, a senior. She's the only senior. They're going freshman, sophomore, sophomore, freshman, right? Ledger's a unique team. They've got two in Augman 
and Kirvin, but you look at their roster, sophomore, junior, sophomore, freshman, it just seems like there are more freshmen and sophomores than anyone on that net. The idea that the COVID class, which is this year's senior class, has thinned out that those ranks, those players didn't get to develop the same way that everyone else normally does. Right, and you're, and you're gonna see the level of basketball then improve in the coming years. You know, we see a lot of sloppy play because uh, kids are learning on the fly. They're, they're, they're playing their JV basketball in the varsity game a lot of the times. So we're only gonna see better basketball uh, in the years to come, but as George Hathaway, our, our outstanding sideline man, said at the beginning of game one, this is the place where the stars are born. And we'll see tonight who can finish in the last six minutes of the championship. Kervin, three, no good. Dudley, strong rebound and wants to push. Nyara Dudley to the basket. Nyara Dudley with back-to-back -back buckets for the Whalers. And if you're Coach Mike Morgan, you, you, you know, what can you do? I mean, that's exactly who you want shooting the ball. Five straight for the freshman Dudley. Lancaster has 13 and uh, Nolis has 10. Nyara Dudley gets the rebound. So Lancaster, Casey, has 13. Nelise has 10. That's 23 of their 44. So the role players, we, we're talking yeah. like wow. how, they're, how they're, their job is not to score. Well, tonight they have. Yeah, half their points are from the, role, from the bench, or not the bench, from the role players. That's enormous. All good. Dudley, Sauls, they've all contributed. Schneider with, with the points as well. To the basket, Dudley Nalise will go and she'll shoot two. And if I'm not mistaken, all six Whalers have scored tonight. You are not mistaken. When are you? All right, listen, uh, <laughs> it happens uh, frequently. When my wife is around, she'll tell you it happens more than anyone knows. Two for Dudley. She has been uh, not yeah. herself from the free throw line. Tonight. Yeah, uncharacteristic. And, you know, we saw in the first game that, you know, missed free throws allowed Wyndham to hang around a little bit longer. We'll see if that's the case here. That one's good. The lead is 10. Blocked by... Lancaster, she's smiling after that one. Oh my she, she timed that one up and she saw it the whole way. Is this volleyball? Another block. It's a Lancaster block party for the Whalers. Give it up. Dudley, Lancaster runs the floor. Basket is good and the foul. Serenity now, Serenity now. Early in this game, Casey, we questions why she wasn't getting the ball more often. And you can see this is a special, special player. No matter what Ledyard tries to do, if she asserts herself, she's just that much better. We just saw her make a block on a drive to the lane, step out and block a jump shot, run the floor, make a basket, miss the free throw, and of course, Nolly Studley there for the putback, and the lead is 14. Lancaster and Dudley showing why they are the premier players in the league. Mike Morgan wants a timeout, and we will take a timeout as well, brought to you by the Burns Agency. Yeah. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19 32. Mohegan Sun and the Cotton Eyed 
Joe has got the kids dancing around. Let's go Whalers. Well, they've got their biggest lead of the game, 14 points with just under five minutes remaining, looking to go back to back in division one. You know, we talked about matchups. My former partner, the sports doctor, loved to remind everyone that, you know, fight matchups make fights. I think this is, there's no better example. If, if Bacon Academy plays Ledger 10 times, it might be like 6 4 7 3 in favor of Ledger. And that's a three missed on the weak side, and Allgood comes down with it, and she's going to go to the ground and travel. Whereas if Bacon Academy played New London 10 times, it might be 5 5. New London's looking like it might be 9 1 against Ledger. The matchups are just so difficult. Ledger just has such a hard time with Lancaster and Dudley. Dudley off to the races. Scoop shot, no good. And a good rebound from Cassie Rice. And the freshman Dykes altered that shot. Ogman bothered by Lancaster. Dudley drives, basket is good, and the foul. Nolly Studley making her case to be the player of the year in the ECC, certainly the MVP of the tournament. She's been fabulous. Her and Lancaster have just dominated here in the second half. Whenever she goes north-south, it's just a big problem for the Colonels. She settled for some threes early and then allowed Ledger to get some momentum, but she's been determined to get to the rim in this second half. Biggest lead of the game is 16 for New London. Let's not forget, Ledger had the lead at halftime. Running back to the zone. Coach Morgan said we gotta keep them off the glass. They have not been able to do it. And the two stars for the Whalers have really turned it on here in the second half. Hardison, quick trigger three, no good. Weak side rebound, Augman. Ball on the floor, all good gets it. Here comes Dudley. Nice hands from Rice. Good move from Kira, uh, Kiki Kerbin. Draws the foul and she'll go to the line. Foul is on, looks like Lancaster. Yeah, good, good footwork there by Kiki. With the spin move and the pivot to draw the foul. No quit in this Colonel team. No. I think once again, you, you run into, at this arena, you run into a a situation where if you're built on scoring a majority of your points from the perimeter, it is an adjustment. If you don't play here regularly, you're not able to get out and practice and learn the depth perception. Hardison hit a couple deep threes, but that's about it for Leggett. Well, New London has aspirations for a state championship as well. With all good healthy, they want to, They think they have a chance at all of it as Lancaster knocks that down in the paint. And at this team right here, you can see a difference. That sixth person with Allgood makes such a big difference for them. This team does want to compete for a state championship. There goes Kerbin. Lancaster bothered that shot. And Nyara Dudley got the rebound. Here comes Nalise. As we're down under three minutes, we should mention Saturday, we're gonna have four games for you on the boys' side, the boys' semifinals from Waterford High School. And then, of course, next Tuesday, we'll be back here again for the boys' Division II and Division I finals. So a lot of good basketball left here on game day. Yeah, I think the, the type of team that will hurt New London in their quest for a state title will be a team that has multiple three-point shooters. Uh, because they do, when they, when they try to protect some of their players from foul trouble, they do sag in that zone and they leave the perimeter open. Yeah, so I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the two the two types of teams, and I'm looking at, if you look at the brackets, and they can they can go. I mean, they're, 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 it's a good, uh, they're in class double M, I believe, and they can go. 
the three-point shooters for sure. But they're going to come up against somebody who can defend Lancaster with one player and can pressure their guards. That, to me, is the combo. Is the combo a team that can pressure those other players and defend Lancaster without gimmicks. That's a good team, though. It is. <laughs> it is, but it doesn't need to be a defender and shut her down. Yeah. It can be kind of like what you saw from Kervin in the first half. It can be, maybe it's a rotation of a bunch of different people, right, who just body her all day and make her life difficult. It doesn't have to be a shut down 6-3 player. It could be, you know, four, you know, you know, five, ten players who just go in and body her. But I think the recipe to beat them is is to get with her and pressure their guards. I still think the pressure on the guards is the key to beating them. And there's Lancaster on the glass. Yeah, and it, it was a valiant effort from the Colonels, but uh, it was, it's, you're just dealing with two players that are right now at a different level than the other players on the court. Swing, Dykes. Tell you what, I'm gonna say it here. This freshman, Maggie Dykes, has a bright future in this league. She does a lot of things well. Sister act, Dudley to Dudley. Nine points for Nayara. And a steal from Nalis. Off to the races. Welcome to Dudleyville. In the second half, Nali Studley and her sister have turned it into their house. Lancaster with the rebound, and right now, a 20-point Wheeler lead as we're down a minute and a half. I want to remind everyone again, Ledger was up four at halftime. It's now a 20-point New London lead. Yeah, and, and, and listen, I've, I've been at, on that, in that situation where you have a great game plan. Your players are doing everything you've asked of them. And it's just that the other team just has a couple players that you can't stop, uh, a la Chris Dunn. You know, when, when, you, when you have to coach against a team that has Chris Dunn on the other team, you could have the greatest game plan and the hardest working players. Just not gonna get done that night. And it's a pun, whether you knew it or not. Uh, two <laughs> freshmen checked into the ball game. Faith Dalton for Ledger and Olivia Benjamin for New London getting some time here tonight. And I, you know, I've said that about Chris Dunn. You know, I, those Whaler teams were certainly very good. And you had guys with him. He always had a second guy who was a college basketball player. So he had a number of good players. But if you're playing New London in, in Connecticut, right, this little, and you've got a lottery pick you're playing against who's got the ball in his hands the whole time. Good luck. I mean, that's, you know, guards win. He's a lottery pick guard in a state like the size of Connecticut. I mean, this isn't California. This is Connecticut, and you got a lottery pick. That's a lot. That's a lot to ask. And he wasn't playing double L. And, and you know, not to jump too far, but, I mean, that's the feeling I get for the potential of number four and number five for this girls' whalers team. I mean, they're, the, the sky is the limit for their development, like you, you alluded to earlier. Uh, Nalis has really improved and accelerated her ball handling um, improvement this year because she's been forced to play the point. And you see some of the subtle things that Serenity can do, that, that 15 foot jumper, uh, being able to block the shot um, from the help side position. I mean, these are things that these players are innately gifted with. So the sky is the limit for these two. And it, it's just to really credit Ledyard's effort in that they had a great game plan and they were in this game for a lot longer yeah. than many might have believed. Three freshmen and a sophomore on the floor right now for New London as they head towards their back-to-back -back championship. But right now there's a, a school in M looking at this game going, how do we defend these two guys? How do we play these two guys? I mean, they even really good teams are going to look and say this is a unique situation because we don't often face two players like this Usually you're up in double L when you to look at multiple college players of this magnitude. You're looking at two college players on the floor right now, and that's going to give a lot of teams problems. And I will say this. I watched them play both games against Bacon Academy. They played both of them without Keanu Allgood. 
the difference in this team with her healthy and playing, both from her presence and contribution on the floor to having the ability to bring in Schneider as a, you know, as a, as a sixth person is a enormous difference for New London. They are a different team than what I saw against Bacon with the added addition of Algo. Absolutely, C couldn't have said it better. And, and when you say two college players, Casey, two Division I college players, you know, there's, there's a lot of college players on the floor right now. A lot of these girls are gonna play in college. Not, not, not all of them are gonna play Division I. Not scholarship players. Under, under 20 seconds remaining, 16. Dudley will go and draw the foul, so Dudley will go to the line. And this is a situation in many games where the coach clears the bench and gets the players out, but Tammy Millsaps can only bring in two players off the bench. And she did. <laughs> and she, she did. did. She did what she could. And that's what Ledger will do. We're going to see Anna Maynard check into the ball game, and Elizabeth Phillips check into the ball game, and Tara McGrath check into the ball game, and Megan Miller check into the ball game. So Ledger with an opportunity to give some folks a little bit of time on the court here at Mohegan Sun. That's something they will remember. And the Whalers are 16 seconds away from their back-to-back -back Division I championships which is something they will remember. And fittingly, the clock will run out with the ball in the hands of Nali Studley. Dudleyville has taken over the Mohegan Sun and the Whalers have won back-to-back -back Division I titles Tammy Millsaps and the number one seeded Whalers are your Division I champions of the girls ECC basketball in what became a dominant second half, leading to a 65-39 victory here over a game ledger team who did have a four point lead at halftime. Yeah, they battled hard and they had a great game plan. They probably needed a couple more three-point shots to go down earlier in the second half uh, to kind of keep New London uncomfortable. But once the Whalers decided that they were going to operate through number four and number five exclusively, uh, they were able to get a lead. And then, and then the, those role players started stepping up. We saw uh, all good, get a bunch of offensive rebounds and a couple putbacks. We saw the younger Dudley hit a big three and get a couple drives. So everything started rolling green and gold once the Whalers established number four and five. Speaking of the New London boys, Savon Warren and Boo Boo Phillips and some of the boys in attendance here tonight watching the girls win the championship. And right there, that's the more important thing. Mike Morgan enjoying this moment with family. The all-tournament team being announced. Kiki Curvin of Ledger. Adriana Hardison. From New London High School, Serenity Lancaster. Serenity Lancaster, of course, from New London High School. From New London High School, Italia Sauls. Italia Sauls. No surprise who your MVP is. <laughs> Dudley, Sauls, Lancaster, Hardison, and Curvin, your all tournament team here for the Division I girls. And not a surprise, not least Dudley cementing her status as the premier player in the league with the MVP of the Division I tournament. Yeah, and some good camaraderie here, you know. That's what it's all about. You see Coach Morgan with his, his young son and the girls hugging because at the end of the day, you know, what we've come through, Casey, in, in the last couple of years with the shutdown of schools and sports, I mean, it's a joy to, to be able to play on this big court 
and display the hard work that you put into the game that you love. Coach Tammy Millsaps, her greatest coaching job while at New London this year. You can see the tears in her eyes. A huge victory for the Whalers, but a team that was playing with seven girls on the roster, six active players for the majority of the year, and played with five for the, you know, the last few weeks. To win a championship means the world. Congratulations, Whalers. Back-to-back -back champions of the ECC Division I. George Hathaway will have coach Tammy Millsaps and the MVP of the Division I tournament, Nalise Dudley. George, a happy group of Whalers. I mean, it's deja vu all over again, back to back champions. Coach Millsaps, how does it feel right now? Feels good. First half was a little rocky. We talked about at halftime, we made some major adjustments at halftime. First of all, our leader, not least, needed to settle down a little bit and get herself involved in the game a little bit more on the defensive end, and that's what turned our offense over. And we switched up the man. We were playing a little bit of a matchup zone, switched to a man, locked down on our player, got some all, uh, defensive rebounds, were able to get out in transition, got the ball to Serenity. We just did a lot of things well in the second half. Yeah, it was a rough first half. I mean, we talked a lot about some adjustments that you made, but how are you going to use those adjustments that you made going forward now, going into the States? Well, that's, the, that's what my job is to do as a coach. If we're not playing, well, I got to tweak some things. So we went more to the, the defense, which is what gets us going. Uh, the offense just kind of flowed based. I think we ran a little bit of our offense, got the ball to the, uh, to our, to the short corner, got it to Serenity, got it on the high low. We just had a lot of good looks that opened up the floor for us tonight. Well, Coach, congratulations. Back-to-back -back ECC Division I champions. And uh, I want to talk to uh, Nalise for a few questions as well. So you were the tournament MVP. Uh, how does it feel to be back-to-back? -back? It feels great. I mean, going out as a senior, winning the ECC all over again, it just feels amazing. And we have such a small group, and a lot of people underestimate us, but we put so much work in, and we deserved it. You certainly did. I mean, this season has certainly been special for you. Surpassed 1,000 career points, a tournament MVP, ECC Division One champion, and you got to play with your younger sister. What has this season meant to you? This season meant a lot to me, like especially like with my sister. Having her just with me just is great. She gets to see what I can do. I get to see what she can do before I leave for college, and everything's just been great. Just having my team by my back, like behind me, step by step, and just ready to go towards states. Congratulations, Elise, once again. Thank you, George. Can't say enough about this group of Whalers. They'll be heading into the state tournament, and they will be a very, very challenging team to contend with. You know, at the end of it all, at the end of it all, you know, no matter what happened, role players stepping up, but at the end, it's it's those two, right? It's Serenity Lancaster and Nalise Dudley. No matter what, Sauls and Dudley and all good, they all contributed, but two stars shine bright tonight. And, and as a former coach, I got to give a shout out to the to the head coach of the Whalers. As you said, you know, I don't know what the other job she did in, in, in other seasons. She probably coached as as hard and, and gave as much effort. But like to have only seven players, I just can't fathom it. You have only seven players in your entire program. You can't scrimmage in practice without bringing in your other coaches, former players, and to keep them focused and locked in and to identify those roles for each other. Um, like you, like she said, yeah, she's got to make adjustments. Well, that's what coaches do. We make adjustments. We, we, we know X's and O's. Um, but it's the things behind the scenes, the team building aspects. That's where you get your teams ready to compete and, and be able to handle adversity. And, and that was adversity in the first half. And they've been facing it all season long. That, that was adversity they faced 
in that first half. Ledyard came out, motivated, felt like they were the better team, looked like the better team at times. Um, and they went in at halftime, they settled down, they came out, and they, and they got the job done because of the preparation that was put in prior to this game all season long. Well, quite a night here for the girls' championships. The first one was the solar power of the Stonington Bears taking home the Division II crown and then welcome to Dudleyville with a little dash of serenity for the Whalers as they brought home the Division I crown. So a fitting end to the girls' basketball season here in the ECC. These teams will move on to state play. Of course, Saturday we will have four semifinal games for you from the X. And next Tuesday, we'll be back right here at Mohegan Sun for the boys' basketball finals. For Chris Giusti and all of the game day crew, I'm Casey O'Neill. Good night, everybody.